guys haven't found squat so far. All right. So That's accurate. So this is uh, session 40 now. Been going on for, what, a year and a half, roughly? Um, last session, uh, a lot of bad things happened. Uh, Tiga died. Uh, Curiel and Ryber, for that matter, both uh, turned on you guys at the last second. Although, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many of you actually knew that Curiel was infested with the intellect devourer since he died or the intellect devourer came out after you whoever was in that room also died yeah we were all unconscious and that thing popped out of him right so nobody saw it happen right so everyone just thinks kuro's just a, a traitor at this point that uh, turned on for no well, did... reason go ahead i was gonna say didn't um the one guy see the intellect devourer in the other room the only person I remember that saw the Intellect of Iron was the one that came out of Ryber. Because by the time... Because uh, I think Kirill was actually so. killed or, or, or knocked unconscious, whatever you want to call it, by the by the Invisible Stalker. Once everyone yeah. else was already dead. And when he tried to escape out the room, he basically got pummeled and fried, I think, by the Moonbeam as an Intellect of Iron, so no one really had an idea. Anyway, so very bad stuff. Tiga died. He's been with me since session two. So that was kind of heartbreaking for me. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just, I just talked to him a couple weeks ago about, okay, what do you want to do if you guys die? We bring you back, blah, blah, blah. I don't want you guys dying. But then he turns around and dies. Damn you, Tiga. That's okay. Tiga's looking forward to playing his new character, if you guys ever find him tonight. So let's uh, switch over to the map where you guys are currently at. I'll probably have to zoom out and do a shift click, get you guys in the right spot. So one second here. This is a fairly big map, but you guys still have not quite explored everywhere. So I'm going to shift click. And uh, aid for it. Do me, do me a, a quick check with Thera. Make sure you still have uh, access to him there. Sure. No, as far as like moving his, his token, I can't remember if I, I dropped in a new token for him or if that's the uh, the old one. Oh, I see. Okay. Here, I'm gonna drop a new one in because I don't think I think that's still the old one. How about that one? Oh, there we go. Can you move that token? Sorry, I just I zoomed out a whole bunch. So. Can we bring you back in? Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, again, just confirm you have control over that token. Okay, there you go. All right. Yeah. So Damon will join us again tonight as, as Tharum. Um, Kev is going to still play uh, Trigby. And we'll see if you guys actually find where their, uh, uh, their PCs are located at tonight. So we left off. You guys are all, I think you all finished a, a short rest, like one hour. So some yeah. of you gained some stuff back, some hit points, and you guys are all crowded in this room. And for lack of a story, I'll just say that the, these three dwarves were also, I say, uh, what is it? I forget their damn names. Gaddy, Gilmag, and Therum. They were all in that room with you, kind of all crowded together, and you guys got to smell a lot of body odor, uh, along with war. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so let me go to my notes here. I had a few things I want to share with everybody and a few questions for you. Um, this is a question from two sessions ago. Now, when you guys went through the big battle with the uh, the Mind Flayer and uh, uh, all the other dwarves and the trolls and all that stuff, um, I shared with you guys, I think in chat, uh, what kind of loot was on the bodies. But I didn't. I, yes. I looked through all your character sheets. And I didn't see where any of you guys took anything that you found on the bodies. Did you just forget to do that, or was that your intention? The only thing Tiga took was the wolf skins that he took. He right, and I got harvested. Note, yeah, and I got note of that. I caught that, but I mean the uh, the mind flare. I know a couple of you guys said I'm going to look through the mind flare or loot him or whatever, but and I shared with you guys what he had, but I didn't see anything on your character sheets to that regard. I think it was Usul and Quarren who looted him. Quarren, can you confirm that? Uh, I honestly don't even remember what I got from it. All right, so let me put into chat what was on the mind flare, and you guys can, can take it from there. 
me. If you don't want any of it, that's fine. I just want to make sure that I'm not forgetting about it. Because once I get rid of the sheet, uh, that's going to be it. Hopefully I didn't copy anything there that was supposed to be DM information. <laughs> Oops, take Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I probably wouldn't have taken the armor because I'm a monk. I'm not sure what Usalal took, but I mean, if he didn't take the dagger, I'd probably be interested in that. Okay, you said you you did or did not want to take that uh, his armor. I wouldn't be interested in that personally. Oh, okay, all right, all right. And Tiga, you didn't get anything off the mind player either, right? No. Okay. I died before that I could do that. No, not the mind flare. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't claim the off it. Yeah, you guys all survived the epic uh, fight. It was just when you guys fought against the, the two little, little, these little invisible guys with no hit points and no spell slots is when you died. Yeah, well, I was looking for a place <laughs> to rest. <laughs> all right, so I'll, I'll follow up with you, so we'll see if you grab anything off of him, but that's fine. We can leave it like uh, like that. Um, couple all right, so I'll just say no, and if he took it, then I'll just remove it. Okay, that's fine. So go ahead. And you're going to take, what you say, the, the dagger, right? Yes. Okay, just make sure you mark that down in your character sheet moving forward. All right, so a couple of updates of the status of everybody here. Because, again, everyone's still pretty much beaten up, bruised, bloodied, whatever. Um, Endon is obviously missing a hand. Um, from last session, um, I think before Tegan died, they were kind of talking about trying to make uh, something similar to what had on his missing arm. Uh, for Endon as well, and one of the, the dwarves that survived, uh, Gilmag, um, already informed you guys that he's a journeyman blacksmith, and he would try to make, he could probably make something like that, but it wouldn't be out of, made of inferior wood, I think was his words. He would make something out of, uh, a little more sturdy out of steel or, or iron. Um, Endon, during this short rest, um, he didn't really, uh, Really, technically, didn't get a rest because he's in a lot of obvious pain. And during the course of that hour, he would have shared with you guys that uh, he's he's not going to be able to uh, move around much more. He said he needs to find a place just to sit and, and, and recuperate because he's got something going on inside of him. He's not sure what's going on, but it's uh, it's affecting his his uh, his his thoughts, his, his movement, and he's just not sure how effective he's going to be much further without an extended rest. Uh, during that conversation, the, the surviving dwarves would have shared that um, as part of their detail over the past several weeks, um, they did clear out a section of the mine that uh, appeared to be like an old infirmary uh, section of the mine. Uh, to their knowledge, uh, the mine flare, the goblins, they don't think they used it, but uh, they hadn't been back there in at least a week. Uh, but they basically made the suggestion that that could be a good place for you guys to possibly hold up and tend to your wounds a little bit, uh, more so than being in this open uh, area here, where we obviously we know what's been in, in, in this area. Um, Trigby, if I didn't already tell you, but you are exhausted. You're suffering from one level of exhaustion. Okay. And you also have a festering wound, which I think I've updated on your character sheet. Yes, I thought. Usul and Quarren are also suffering from one level of exhaustion. Like Tiga mentioned before about the two uh, uh, wolf pelts that he took from the wolves, uh, Tharum yes. has pretty much taken those at this point and shared with you guys that he was going to continue on with Tiga's request to see what he can do to uh, convert these things into some uh, usable cloaks. But he tells you guys he'll need a couple days to uh, to complete that if you guys still want that. And sure. Out of character, I can't remember if Tiga shared with you guys what he what his intention was, what he thought those cloaks could do for you guys. Can you, you remember that, Jason, if you shared it with them? I did not share that with them. Okay. And I think you got that through your survival check of knowing what could be done with Correct. The okay. Yes. All right. That was all out of character, so you guys didn't hear any of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am going to take Tegan's bow. Well, just take them. my gear. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you that's what soldiers do. I mean, I'm thinking of taking Cariel's armor and reshaping it for myself. I don't blame you. I'd take it too. It's a damn good bow. <laughs> I'll just, you know. I'm fine with that. I'll fight in your memory with this bow. 
Now, just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason. I think that one required attunement, right? Yes, it did. Okay. So just keep track of how many things you've got that require attunement. Uh, with corn. I think that's at least okay. two for you. Yeah, that's two now. Okay. Um, also, um, I think it was last session, or it may have been an email. I apologize. It's been three weeks. But I think Baron and uh, maybe Tharum talked about uh, taking the Dwarven Cleaver off of Robert's uh, body and presenting that to Warak. It's kind of like a yes. uh, uh, warrior's agreement that when you, you know, defeat in battle, you have the choice of taking their weapon if you want. So Warak now has that giant uh, two-handed uh, sword uh, that, was ba that almost killed him, basically, of the other dwarf that uh, uh, was killed. Okay, what else? Um, again, during that short rest, again, Warak's not here anymore. He's, he's got a, he got a job in real life that's interfering with this. So uh, he would have shared with you guys that uh, he's been feeling kind of bad about what he did to these dwarves in here and how he just kind of had this bloodlust. And he feels somewhat obligated to, to help these guys uh, escape. He wants to go find the, uh, the missing prisoners that I, t I told you guys about that could still be locked up. Um, he's hurting badly. He needs to take a rest or something to uh, uh, recuperate a little bit. But he's feeling uh, driven and or uh, pushed to kind of do something uh, more permanent for these folks to kind of pay back for the wrong he's done by slaying one of their uh, um, uh, former leaders in Rurba. Um He'll also share with you guys that, uh, I can't remember if he did this before or not, that... Uh, when he flew down and you guys first met him, uh, he'd been staying with uh, uh, a little deep gnome on top of the, uh, the cliff, top of the stairs, uh, an old warlock. And uh, uh, the warlock, although he's a little bit short-tempered and not much of a talker, uh, he can possibly help someone out as well from if they need a place to stay or need some healing or whatever. But that is a, a long walk to get there. Just shares it with you that uh, if and when you guys are ready to leave, you'd be happy to kind of point uh, you in the right direction to get uh, him. Okay, I'm getting some background noise from somebody. I'm not sure if that's probably is. me. Okay. Do you have uh, push to talk capabilities? Yeah. Okay. It's on one. Okay, so try to use that if you could cut down the background noise. Um, let's see, what else? Did you go on an official day? Oh yeah, um, who all looted the Mind Flayer body? I know it was Quarren and possibly Usul, correct? As far as I know, I, I, I didn't loot it. As far as I remember, I kicked it and walked away. Okay. Uh, Quarren, you still there? Yep. Go ahead and give me a, a perception or investigation with advantage. Good thing I can't do an advantage. Uh, Jeez. All right, so as you were kind of looting through the body and seeing if there's anything else worth uh, worth keeping, you do notice a ring on one of his fingers that you didn't notice uh, before while you were basically pummeling the crap out of him. So whether or not you want to do anything with that, that's up to you. Sorry, my thing cut out. I'm not sure if it did for everybody else, but I didn't hear that. As you were looking, looking through the uh, Mind Flayer's body, you would have noticed a ring on one of his fingers that uh, you're pretty sure was not there before while you were pummeling him. Um, well, I'd probably point out to Osul, who's like the most magically adept of us. Um... I'm not sure if I'd remove it from his finger or not yet. <laughs> You're a little paranoid based on what Porto did or what? <laughs> just uh, a little bit, yeah. Just bad experiences with his rings. This is nice. I'm glad I set a precedence with you guys. All right, I'm just looking over Usul's uh, sheet. He has he is tapped out. He has no spell slots left. So he'll share that with you. If you were hoping him to do some kind of detect magic or anything on it, um, he can't do anything until they get a chance to kind of rest and recuperate. All right, well, I'll, I'll take it off its finger for now and put it in my pocket, but I'm not going to put it on. 
<laughs> Alright, so again, just make a note of that in your uh, your character sheet. Alright. And we'll address that whenever uh, you feel like addressing it again. Okay, so I think that's all my notes that I had to share with everybody from last session. At about, uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, roughly, plus or minus 2 hours. It's been uh, almost 24 hours since you guys had a, a long rest. And you guys, again, most of you are suffering from some form of exhaustion. I'm fine, guys. I feel great. <laughs> I have no pain whatsoever. I'm good. I'm also dead. <laughs> oh. Alright, what do you guys want to do? Um, well, I think... Do you want to go find a place to sleep? Like a better place in this tiny-ass room? Well, I think last session we had talked about, because we tapped on the back of the wall in this room, mm -hmm. and there was a hollow sound, and we had talked about maybe breaking through there. Yeah, there was hollows in, like, all of these rooms, I think it was. Just to recap, you guys uh, tested this wall here, and you also tested the wall of it to the south down here as well, and you heard similar echoing or hollow sounds, or whatever you want to call it, something behind that wall, basically. Again, so Gilmag would have offered up to you guys about the whole infirmary being a place that you guys can possibly hold up. Uh, again, he's not exactly sure if it's occupied by anybody, but uh, when they busted open, there were uh, a few uh, old beds. I'm not sure if how many of them were actually still intact, but it was a, a place all off to its own. There wasn't like a back door to it, so to speak. So it could be well defended if you guys chose to uh, go look for that place. I would like to ask him about how far away it was. Uh, the two dwarves kind of look at each other, kind of scratch their heads a little bit, and they say, it's probably 15, 15 minutes to 30 minute walk to get there. Hmm. Is there anywhere else we want to look around around here before we head off somewhere else? No, but I am going to be taking Tika's body with me if I can. Should we take Kirill as well? Oh, I don't care about him. <laughs> <laughs> that friendship wasn't that tight. <laughs> That's you guys' call. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> We're here, we could smash through the wall as is. We don't have to go tromping back through the dungeon to where bad things could happen. Okay, Warwick is gonna pipe up at some point. And you guys look at him, he's pretty haggard. Um, out of character, he has one hit point, no hit dice left. And he is, uh, he's like... Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> And he's going to tell you guys that we are not going to go digging around any other places that may have more of these bad guys because I'm in no condition to fight. And Endon kind of, kind of looks around and he holds up his stub of a hand and says, yeah, I'm kind of in the same category, fellas. Infirmary it is. You yeah, have convinced Trigvi. Lead the way, then. The infirmary. <laughs> Start. Uh, Jason, the answer your question is, is no. Go ahead and keep them. Okay. Nice. Right, so you, you guys are all in agreement about heading over to the infirmary? Roger. Well, I mean, I'm sure we got interrupted looking around, but we're not, we're not in any condition to actually continue that, so we need to go somewhere and recover. So here's what I need. I need everybody that's that's uh, going to the infirmary move yourself to right here. Kind of put you in the put yourself in the marching order. Um, put yourself in a marching order going uh, this direction. Well, I'll lead the yeah, way because I'm not in too I'm not in too terrible a condition. So I'll fall behind. I'm staying in the middle with this body, like cover me, guys. My hands are full, and I need those. Well, I'm assuming that Gilmag is going to be up here next to Baron, since he's kind of telling you guys where you're going. So I'm at least put Gilmag. Yeah, probably. 
Let's see. I'm got control over Warak. He'll be somewhere in the middle because he's a little paranoid. That if he gets looked at funny, he'll drop. Uh, Gadi will stay back behind him. Also have Usul. Usul has. Look at him. He's got like all his hit points back. Look at him. Jesus, Usul. He'll take the rear guard. And Indon will be somewhere in the middle as well. Uh, where do you want Fuha at, Baron? Um, uh, he'll be somewhere in the middle. Okay. Right. Buffering from anything? I don't remember. Alright, so just so we're clear, you guys are going to leave uh, Ryber's body. Uh, what happened to Kirill? Well, no, Fuha has Ryber's body, obviously. Okay, Fuha's going to be carrying Ryber. I'll put him off to the side just so we'll have that. Um, but Kirill is, um, I've taken his armor and, I don't know, maybe some of his equipment. I did look through both his and uh, uh, Tegid's bags uh, beforehand. Um, I, I don't know if I actually found anything worth uh, looking at. Okay, let me go pull up uh, Kirill's and tell you if there's anything else in there that you need to be aware of. Tegan, you can share if you had anything else. Yeah, so you found bacon and beans in Tegan's bag. <laughs> oh, sweet. I take the bacon. I definitely took the bacon. I look at Warak as he's uh, obviously in poor shape and give him a cure wounds. To... Uh, there is a light crossbow in there. Oh, I don't use that. A tinderbox. And a bedroll. It's pretty much it. Tegan pretty much found what he needed as he went, so. Okay. So, I'm just adding bacon from Tegan's backpack. Alright, so as far as Kirill's concerned, um, he still has uh, five of the uh, dragon scales from that, uh, okay. from that dragon you guys fought back in the open area. Uh, which color are they? Oh, These are a few the other things. I'll, I'll put it in chat. Yeah, white. Five white dragon scales. I'll add those. Oh yeah, that was before you joined the group. Yeah, they they uh, defeated a young, um, a young white dragon before they got to Gukumar. Let's see. He's got bone dice. He's got some kind of an insignia of a rank. Um, no, nope, he doesn't have that. They got taken out. Oh, he has uh, that nice shiny shield of his. Well, I don't want the shield. Okay. I've got my own special nice shield. Um, does anybody else want a nice shiny shield? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, if no one will take it, I'll take it, but... I put, I... All, I put the other stuff of Tegan's in chat. He had some scales, some hides. He also had a potion that only one person in the group would recognize. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> you only had one of those? Who has the rest of them? I only had one. Well, someone took all of them. One mysterious potion from T. Gibbs' bag. Corn, did you take the rest of them? Did we lose Corn? Did I lose everybody? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Hello? Corn, you there? No. Sorry, I just got back. Hey, we were asking. Oh, he did say, he say be right back. Oh, sorry. Uh, did you have any of those uh, returning potions? No, I did not. Okay, so someone didn't mark them down on the character sheet because you guys took, I forget, like six or eight of them, as I recall. They may have been on some of the ones that got left behind, too. That's true. Some of the other guys might have dropped out or whatever. Ever. Your corner out and Tegan wasn't very fond of them. <laughs> yeah, I remember using the one Tegan. I had. I had one a while ago, but we used that even after we got the ones that... Here's what I'll do. I'm going to make a note of it um, to go back and, and look uh, at that session about how many he actually gave you. Uh, if we just missed it because someone dropped out of the, the campaign, then I'm still going to rule you guys can still have them. But I just need to cut That's fine. number on them. Okay. Tiggy was planning to use to, to spike people's drinks with him, <laughs> ones he didn't like. Good thing you died. Then. That would have been interesting. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. So everybody's here. This is everybody that's getting dragged over there. Kirill's body's being left behind. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. I took his armor and looked through his bag, and I guess we're leaving him there. All right. So let me grab all you guys. I feel bad though. Mostly. Okay. I think it was this one. There's no fog of war. No dynamic lighting. I'm just going to drop you guys in here. Um. I'll just put you in here. So you guys are basically, let me do a shift click. I take 10 force damage from being in the wall. <laughs> you guys are basically, you came down this hallway here, right? And this door yep. is open. It looks like it's uh, just a, a big table in this room over here with the hallway further down. And Gilmag will point down to you that uh, pretty much down here to the uh, to the uh, right of the hallway is another doorway leading to uh, more like the sick bay. That's where traditionally the uh, the more sick people went. And during this way, there's a couple offices and some more, uh, for lack of a better term, some small living areas, small living rooms, more like a uh, like an inn would be. So to speak. Sorry. Oh, Jason, yeah, Usul is, is still with you guys. I'm going to kind of keep you guys all together so that someone doesn't... No, 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 no. I can actually seem like he's logged in. Oh, yeah. I, you missed it at the beginning of the session. He's been logged in for like a week. So, and he's, oh. <laughs> I think he's logged into a tablet somewhere and didn't log out. But I just kind of moved oh, okay. the corner to get him out of the way. Log in, but you never log out. <laughs> Alright, so you guys want to do any kind of investigation in these rooms, or you just want to let Gilmag kind of lead you down the hall to the suggested areas, or what do you want sure. to do? Sure, I will. I'll look around. I'm kind of in a rush to go rest before we start investigating stuff, to be honest. <laughs> That's okay, I'll look around. You looking around in this I room? I probably won't die, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah I'll look around in here. Okay, going to give an investigation check. I'm great at these guys. Trust me. Ten. <laughs> you see some broken chairs. The the large table in the middle has a big split right down the middle of it. Oh, its uh, its legs is kind of half hanging there. Uh, used to be something on the walls, but now it's just like dust and ash. Uh, nothing's been in this room for a while. That's a shame. Is there any chairs that are not broken? Uh, you want to try sitting on one? <laughs> no, okay. not really. Because with that investigation, you're not really sure. Uh, it's fine. I'll leave him here. Alright. I'd like to go check out the inn area that uh, the dwarf mentioned. So, or the living quarter area. Yeah, so Gilmag, I believe that was Gilmag. on the... That's fine. And Gilmag will kind of look around for the rest of you looking for basically confirmation that's what you want to do. You know, basically tell you that it's okay, we gotta head down this hallway here, if you, uh, you wanna head that way. Yeah, I'll head that way. You guys kinda stay in the same little order as you were when you came in? If so, don't move yourself. Yeah. Just keep yourself kinda in that yeah, order. Yeah, pretty much. That'll keep me squared. Oh, okay. Always in front, if you don't mind. Okay. Oh, we sort of like that way, weren't we? So you guys will go down into this hallway. Oops, put back to my pointer. You can see it kind of curves back off to the right. Gilmag and Fuha, Gilmag and Baron, I think, up in front. You know, point up this doorway, yes. this door, which is already open. It says right in there is the uh, the place I would recommend that we stay. So there's a few other rooms further down the hallway, but this is kind of like a large common area room in there. And he'll kind of look around. He'll actually kind of lead the way in there. Alrighty. <laughs> so we're gonna move all ourselves, or I want the three people in front to give me a perception check. Okay. okay. Which obviously one of them is Gilmag. Oh crap! Look at me. <gasps> I'm totally unprepared. Let me have my freaking dice out here. Doo -doo -doo. Shitty DM. 
It's, it's fine. You're fine. fine. You have a lot to handle. Yeah, but dice, that's like DM 101. Freaking dice out. <laughs> okay, whatever else roll me, I don't have to worry about it. Oh, I'm at disadvantage. No, I got a nice mix. Oh, yeah, everyone has exhaustion rolls out with disadvantage. So that was Trigby, Ape. Oh, yeah, Ape Fourth is technically Tharum. And he was fine. Yes. Okay, let me go ahead and roll for Gilmag just to make sure. Oh, yeah. It's tiring being a hero. You guys are blind. <laughs> Gilmag walks in and says, what's, what's wrong with you guys? Kind of looks around and he sees uh, uh, several of the beds. There were some uh, uh, footprints in this area. Uh, you guys have to take a closer look to try to figure out what type of footprints they are. But um, he's going to kind of cautiously make his way out there and he'll point at the, the, uh, the footprints on the ground as he goes a little bit deeper inside there. Huh. Can, Can I, I check, check out, out the footprints? footprints? Investigation or uh, survival? I'm technically trained in survival. Technically. Let's we'll see how well that goes. Hey, hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. Yeah, you definitely recognize them as, as goblin footprints. And with that, Ooh, with that role, you even know they're at least, uh, your estimation, three to five days old. Oh, they're ages old. But we're fine. It's fine. <laughs> They're probably all dead now. We've killed so many goblins. Alright, so Gilmag will hear that from you and he'll take a walk in here to the center of the room and kind of look around and look back to you and says, I... It seems clear. For how long, I don't know. Are there any holes in the roof? Any holes in the roof? Um, give me a perception. You and uh, Tharum can do that. I guess Trigby too, if he's in there. Oh, that's pretty good, Trigby. Even with disadvantage. I know, that was still pretty good. No, I rolled persuasion, not perception. I misclicked. Uh, okay. Well, that's fine, because uh, uh, Tharum, that's going to throw me for a loop. Change your name to uh, Tharum in, the, in the, uh, the chat thing there. That's going to throw me off 8-4, sorry. Yeah, sorry. So, Tharum would have oh. looked up and kind of turned to both of you and says, no, this, this, this ceiling seems to be intact. And you guys look up and you'll confirm it's a smooth stone surface. Not like that uh, uh, kind of craggly uh, crevice with all kinds of little hidey spots like you were in the, the main room. <laughs> all righty, then. <laughs> I see you're in chat, uh, Tegan. I know you're so upset you're not there. <laughs> hear, hear a very faint voice coming from his corpse. Goblins. Now, I'm assuming all the rest of you are kind of coming up behind them. Is that correct? Or were you guys staying behind? No, I'd be behind them. Okay. I guess technically, you are the only one there that's not me, <laughs> Quarren. Quarren's <laughs> 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 right, so like, hey, Quarren dragging to his body. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, again, you guys notice on the ceiling, there's there's not much up there. Gumeg just kind of looks both ways and looks back at you, Baron, and shrugs. Says, well, what do you want to do? You think it's safe? Well... I sniff. What does this place smell like? <laughs> does it smell like danger? Give me, a, give me a perception. Let's see what you can smell. Oh, look at you. I have never... I, every time I've asked to sniff uh, something, I've never rolled low. In my entire life, I've never rolled low on a smelling check. <laughs> Alright, so you breathe in a couple real good sniffs in the air and... All you smell is just this old, dank musk and dust, and just it's just a bunch of old smell. But you don't smell anything threatening, other than maybe smell uh, safe. Maybe it's, we're fine. Maybe the room and Gilmag next to you, they they could, they could probably use a shower or a bath or something. But you don't smell anything yet you know, worse than that. Nope. nope. Smell, smell safe. safe. Let's do this. <laughs> the dwarf smell test is always sound. I'm alright with it. Some <laughs> might not be, but I trust it. Oh, time to get a bed! Do you think we should check further down the hall, guys? To make sure those goblins aren't still kicking about. Well, I, I guess we can. 
So I'm going to I'm going to head further down the room just to sort of scout out the other rooms. Borax going to kind of uh, bully his way through the hallway here. Walk to the first bed. He's going to collapse on it. He's going to collapse. Okay. Somebody put Warwick on his side because he's saying to hell with this. I'm about to die. I need some rest. <laughs> he's on one hit point. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, Gotti will kind of look at you guys as well. Says I, I'm not in the mood for adventuring, and I'm I'm definitely not one. So I'll wait inside here if you guys want. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll watch after Warwick. Yeah, that's it. Kind of. Yeah, yeah okay. There and kind of stand over Warack a little bit. Where are you going, uh, Trigley? Yeah, I'm gonna We're go. Uh, I'm gonna go that way. I will follow suit. And I'm gonna sort of peer. Around. I'm gonna do it stealthily. Oh, you shouldn't bring me with you then. <laughs> Uh, give me a stealth check before you get to the corner, Trigby. And l let me roll for these other guys, see if they'll go or not. Um, you know what? Endon is exhausted, and he's missing a hand. He kind of looks at you guys and shakes his head, and he says, screw that. And he goes back inside the room here as well. Usul, I went to you, Endon. Usu, on the other hand, he still looks fresh. He has no freaking spell slots. Let me roll for him. Shit. Yeah, he's going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm assuming Fuha is gonna stick with you, right, Baron? He's a loyal guy. Nah, he can go rest. Yo, I, I'll t I'll tell him he can go and rest. He doesn't have to come. All right, so he'll drag River's body in here as well and place him. Also, he's not very stealthy. I mean, I'm actually okay at stealth. Okay. D despite the disadvantage, still got a 14. Yeah, so it looks like Usu and Theron are staying back a little bit. I see Baron and Trigby stealth check. Okay. And you're looking around the corner. Is that correct, Trigby? Yeah. Which way? Sort of, um, I'll look right, then left first. Get myself oriented. Okay, you look to the right. Um, pretty much everywhere you see a, a, a door symbol on this map, it's not a door. It's just an open archway. Um, it looks like there used to be, looks like there used to be doors there. Uh, you can still see some hinges and bits and pieces of wood, but pretty much all the doors and every one of these areas are, are deteriorated to the point where there's nothing much left there. And as you look to the right, you'll see kind of a, a larger room uh, off to the right beyond the doorway. You obviously see the other open doorway here going into another room. Follow your lead. Well, I'm going to uh, sneak over to the room that says five on it and sort of peer in there and maybe get a better view of what's inside the other room. Room number three. Okay. Go ahead. Is it your intention to pretty much search this uh, whole area, Trigby? Yeah, more or less. I just want to check to see if there's anything hiding in these rooms. So here's what I'm going to do to kind of expedite this since half the group is uh, still back in the room resting. And there's potentially somebody else in some other room somewhere else. Give me a, let's see, give me, let me count the rooms. One, two, three. Give me three stealth checks and three perception checks. Same thing for anyone else who is following him. Okay. okay, I will come with him. <laughs> <laughs> my, my stealth is at disadvantage, mind you. Which means that's a critical fail. That's okay, I've done some pretty shitty stealthing, it looks like. Okay, yeah, it looks like. So I got an, an 8 on the first one. 13 on the second one. And a 21 on the third. Jeez. Trigby's at disadvantage, 6, 17, and 9. All right, Trigby, so as you start going to the other areas, you uh, you miss a crack in the wall or in the floor, and you fall down on one knee and left a big old clang. There's a kind of 
rattles out through all the oh, bouncing off the walls and everything there. Uh, I'm assuming all of you guys would stop at that and kind of stop and listen. And then your three perceptions mm-hmm. were, see the first one, and that's a disadvantage. <laughs> nope, you don't seem to hear anything when you fell. Now let me check. Oh shit, this is a lot of rolls I gotta look at here. Yeah. Yes, uh, there were a lot. The room got a 17 on his first stealth. Let me just ask. Okay, so Baron, what was your stealth on your first roll? My stealth on my first roll was an eight. eight. Perception on your first roll? My, My first, first perception was uh, 17. Okay. And same thing for you, Therum. Uh, first perception was a 10. Okay. And your first stealth roll? It was a 17. Okay. All right. So I'm going to rule that you guys pretty much have, have well, let me click. Search this entire area. And all you found in this area was, again, some more rooms, uh, a little more private rooms as opposed to the big common room you guys were in before. It was like the same as before, but uh, just a little bit more, uh, it's what some of the nicer rooms were, so to speak, where that's the last room you guys were in, more like a barracks. Uh, this room right here was uh, like an old storage room. See shelves along the walls, but they're completely bare. There's a few broken casks, pottery, maybe some remnants of some old crates on the floor, but uh, nothing of value. Uh, some of the beds in here look like they may be able to be functional. I mean, most of the, the bed frames themselves are collapsed, but it's like straw stuffed uh, burlap for, for like beds. But nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Okay. So, okay. so your second mm-hmm. one, I'm going to roll for this area over here. So Trig B got a 17 on stealth. Okay. And uh, what'd you get, Baron, on your stealth? I got a 13 on my stealth. Okay. And uh, the room? Uh, 15 on stealth. Okay. Go ahead and move your three tokens over here, guys. To the left of the, the map where I'm pinging. Okay. And trick be your second perception. Uh, my second perception was uh, 18. Okay. Anybody get uh, better than that on their second one? Nope. Okay. That's a new. All right, so Trigger, as you uh, come into this area here, you quickly kind of realize um, that this looks more like a, you're not sure if it's a doctor's office or just more of a sick bay. You can see a couple of tables up here that uh, deteriorate to the point. Uh, looks like there's, give me a perception, that's good enough. A uh, couple of them look like they're slightly red, like they've been stained. You're not sure if it's from blood or just from being old. And they have a, quite a few old, rotten, tattered bedrolls uh, all on the corners over here as well, all throughout the room. Um, up in this section, I said three rolls, right? One, two, okay, that'd be the third one. Yeah, so this pretty much room, it's, it's got a couple tables all over the place, broken chairs, uh, an old, this used to be some kind of a closet or a dresser, but again, it's deteriorated to the point where uh, it's bare on the inside, nothing in there, and a bunch of old uh, tattered bedrolls on the floor. So nothing terribly exciting, really. Nope. All right, so that was the two, and then the third was where? Okay. So, do we move over there now? Yeah. We like we saw that there was nothing in there. You saw nothing of value of of concern with that roll. Oh, these bed rolls will go great with my collection. All right. They're rotten. So, trick me. Your third perception was what? Uh, eighteen. Really, even with disadvantage. Look at you rolling good. Sorry, se- sorry, eleven. Eleven. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Are you wait? Sorry, perception or stealth? Sorry. Sorry, stealth. That was my fault. Stealth is what I meant to say. Oh, oh my third stealth is a nine. Okay. You make it worse than that? No. no. I got a twenty-one with disadvantage. <laughs> Way to make me feel good, guys. Way to make me feel good. <laughs> All right. So let's see how I want to play this. All right. So Jamie, you walk into the room, and the first thing you kind of know is. Uh, across the hall is like a pile of bones up in the corner over here. And just the shock of seeing that, you weren't expecting to see that, 
kind of has you you stumble a little bit and you, you kick uh, an old pail, old metal pail on the floor across the room. Uh. <laughs> so now give me a perception. Oh, sorry, you guys did. What was your perception, Trigby? Big, Big seven. seven. Okay. And uh, Baron? Six, Sixteen. Seven. Did you get better than that, the room? Uh, no, I tied with that. Okay. All right, so you guys look around the room here, and you'll see that this is uh, obviously a place where they uh, took care of the buried. Um, closer inspection, you'll see that uh, these pile of bones that are each one of these corridors here, um, they're almost like dust. They're covered in ash. And what did you say, 16 or 18? You rolled. 16. 16. Both you and Therum got a 16, right? Yes. yes. Go ahead and roll me a uh, a survival or a medicine check to see if you can glean anything else off. That, that does that involve Trigvi or no? No, since you failed your perception check, you're not even going to know to uh, look for this. Okay. Well, that's good. I got a Twenty-three. Okay. Um, you're pretty sure that uh, these remains were burnt here in place. It's almost like it's a crematorium of where they, okay. they possibly burnt the dead, the sick, you're not sure. And a matter of fact, in the room, there is a, an empty coffin sitting right here as well. It's, it's dilapidated and parts of it are missing or hanging off. Is there anything inside of the coffin? No, it, it's open and it's, like I said, it's half of it's like just kind of hanging open and, and crumbled to the ground. Hmm. All righty. Well, have we looked everywhere? Uh, everything except the center room, which I'll go ahead and just share you guys. Yes. With that. That's uh, as you go in that room. Looks like it's a, a central office area. Um, there's a uh, a large cabinet area over here. It looks it's about half intact, but it's got some empty uh, little bottles and flasks of glass and various things in there. Um, an old table is kind of broken down, all, all, sitting on two legs. And these areas back here look like they used to be some kind of a, a locked uh, storage area for something. Again, the doors are pretty much gone. The shelves are all empty, other than a few empty pots and pans and, and flasks and little baubles. Uh, nothing in there of any kind of value. And to be perfectly honest with you, I have no idea what the hell that's supposed to be. So, would it say it's not there? <laughs> it's, a it's a conference table. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that's like a, a giant globe, but okay. It kind of looks like it looks like um, some sort of demonstration. Or, no, that's not the right word, but like of the the planes. Oh yeah. So yeah. Like you, you see the different circles on it, so it could be like the inner and outer planes. Yeah, except that doesn't make sense for this area. I know what this area is. <laughs> no, it doesn't make any sense for this area. <laughs> it's a water barrel. Something strange is going on, guys. We better leave. This inner outer plane thing is right here. <laughs> Quick run, everybody run. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys, so i'm gonna say one last thing i'm pretty one last thing as you guys are walking all through these rooms you would have saw the and uh, noticed the same uh, uh goblin tracks and footprints prints all over the place and again with uh with some of those high rolls you guys were getting on some of those i'm gonna go and rule that you would have definitely recognized and been the same as what you saw in the other room and about the same age all about three to five days old okay, okay so we're probably fine so I'm going to say I'm satisfied with my checking around. Let's go have a rest and set up uh, you know, a guard schedule or what have you. I'll take first watch. All right, go move yourselves back into the common room if that's where you're going to. Look at you guys just going right through walls. Yep. yep. That's a special kind of skill. All right, so is everyone kind of spying their own little bed or anyone kind of... Staying close to each other. I'm going to rest over here just in case something goes wrong. Then I can ready myself quickly to I Actually, support. yeah, Fuha might rest. Right, so just so I'm clear, you guys are going to take a, a long rest here? A short rest? What's your intention? I think we're long resting. We need a long rest. Okay. I think so. Alright, so... As you guys are all, whoever is taking a, 
whoever's sleeping at this point, turn yourself sideways like I just did with Endon here, just so I can know who's resting and who's like keeping watch or whatever. I'll tell, I'll tell the group that I'll do watch after four hours of meditation. So I'll take up second watch then. All right, so Baron, you're taking the first watch for the first yeah. four yeah. hours. Okay, before you guys all fall to sleep, both Warak and Endon at this point, I'm not sure anyone else would share or not. Say so this is this is going to be a a long long rest. It says I, I don't want the typical I sleep for six to eight hours and get back up again. It says I gotta I gotta recuperate here a little bit. So don't wake me up after eight hours. That's what basically the direction Endon and Warak will will share with you guys. Would you guys agree with that? Okay. okay. Since, Since we can't smother them with a pillow, sure. <laughs> I mean, we could Warak. He only has one hit point. It would, it would be that hard to smother him. Well, I didn't you, bring you my give in, in on that special healing potion you took from Tegid. <laughs> um, I don't know what that potion does. <laughs> Endon doesn't either, so he's not going to fall on you to take it. <laughs> Corin <Corinne> does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Baron, nope. so you're going to keep watch for four hours, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just sit here you, and watch. Just, give me, uh, uh, just two uh, perception checks. Okay. Four hours go by, and you don't hear or smell anything. <laughs> awesome. 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 Okay, I guess I go like quarren after that point then. Yeah, that's fine. Alright. And find a bed and fall over on it. So another four hours, I'm assuming, right, Corn? Corn, you still there? Sorry. Sorry, I wasn't hitting my button. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay here for four hours and then wake everybody else up. Okay, two more perception checks. <laughs> Jeez, I'm rolling like shit. Yep, another four hours go by and uh, nothing there. Warak and Endon are still... Oh, yeah, let me put Endon out of the hallway. I'll actually put him in a room. <laughs> He's snoring away. So let's Gilmag back here. What was that? Those, Those are, are for my weapons. weapons. Ah, okay. <laughs> Your weapons. Nice. All right, so that's a long rest. So everyone gains their uh, their full hit points back and whatever else they gain from a, from a full rest. Let me go through here. Would I, Would I lose another point for festering wounds? Yes. Oh. No, it's at 24 hours, so that'll be it again at roughly noon every day. You're going to lose a, another point from your max. Okay. Whoever has Tegid's bow, it had one charge left in it. Oh, okay, thanks. I was going to ask it. Okay, let me go through. Oh, shit, I got a lot of people to keep track so is, it, is it done yet, then, for us to roll? Um... Say again? Because it's the, it's, it's daily, daily at dawn usually that the that magical items recharge. Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is it dawn? Should I ask that before I rolled? Yep. Yeah, it'd have been at dawn. Sorry. Sorry. You guys keep me on my toes. Okay. Did I not? Well, get anybody's hit points back. Oh, really? oh right. Gilmag. Hit points should probably bring them back up. All right, so how much longer, Corn, are you going to let these guys uh, sleep? I don't know, like, a few more, more hours since they asked for a little bit longer, but we can't hang here forever. All right, hold on a second. I got one of Usul's thing and update his sheet. Usul's not here, and he freaking no, loves Usul has been asleep. <laughs> He level up and he's not here. Great. I've been telling him for like three sessions. Okay, so you guys take a long rest. You're gonna level up. So let me bring in his new Usul. I've had ready for who knows how long. Come on, where you at? All 
Okay, so if you're letting them rest for another couple more hours, one, one more perception check. Corn. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty you bad. You hear a mouse pee in the corner. That's pretty bad. I rolled a... Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, nothing else uh, shows up there. All right, so that was eight, ten hours. It was one o'clock in the afternoon, so now it's like, shit, what is that, nine? It's like 11 o'clock at night. Hey, everybody's up at 11 o'clock at night. That makes sense. A bunch of night owls. I mean, I mean we're underground. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything under point. here. So I'm assuming everybody probably woke up before then, prior to Endon and Warak waking up, but they'll finally get back up and <laughs> feeling much more rejuvenated. Now, with that being said, I got to switch to another map here for just a select few while you guys were taking your extra nap there and potentially letting someone else suffer. So, let me switch over to this map. Wait, Wait what? Um, I think I got to drop your, your tokens in here just so you guys can see. So, let me do that for you guys. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I know you are. You and, and Abe Forth and... Uh, Sylvia are all there, but I gotta drop the other guys in just so you can see. So I'm just dropping you in here so you can see the map. Well, I thought it was. Come on, where are you at? One of those. He's not here. Put him in there. Is that everybody? Did I miss anybody that should be in there? I think that's it. Um. Oh, sorry. Let me shift click. Everyone sees now, right? Yep. 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 Yes. Okay. And Sylvia, I fixed your token, so you're now half elf instead of human. You should be able to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I sort of just see the black around the room, but I assume that's because I can't see around corners or through doors. Right. So those doors are locked in front of you. So let me give you a little update here. I sent this update to the three that are in here. So Baron and Corn, you're just kind of hearing the story here. Um, yeah. This yeah. is a holding cell where these guys have been here for, at least for Aveforth and Sylvia, they've been here for several weeks. Um, Hindle and the rest of the dwarves have been here for several months. Uh, most of the dwarves were, were all captured here uh, when they were traveling to Gukumar. Kind of the same reason that Baron and his friends were as well. Um, but they've been trapped and basically interrogated, tortured, whatever you want to call it, by uh, um, this mind flare in this room. Uh, in the center of the room right now, there are three cages. Uh, the two on each each outside here has some partially uh, all their humanoid bodies at the bottom of it. Uh, the center one has uh, one dwarf that's kind of standing right in the center, looking all paranoid as hell. Um, and you guys, you guys in the cells don't see anything else but what's out right side the door. Like I said, you guys have small little two by six openings near the top and the bottom of the cells of your doors so Hindle, you'll be able to see out but you won't be able to see like back into this corner from where you are right. right so you have no idea where those beasts are you've seen them before but you don't see them right now as far as Abe fourth and sylvia all you can see is into these other rooms here through those little openings and that's another cell with some more dwarves on that side as well <clears throat> what do you guys like Oh, by the way, all three of you are suffering from one level of exhaustion. You haven't seen or heard from the, the goblins that have uh, normally come by at least at least once a day. Sometimes they'll, you'll get lucky enough and they'll bring scraps twice a day. But you haven't seen or heard from them in, in several hours. Hindle's, Hindle's yelling. <laughs> oh, at the door. Yelling what? Yelling. Look in chat. Look in chat. Oh, sorry. All right, well, I'm like, who said that? I'm not, I'm not the calamari face. That guy's dead. I tore his tentacles off. No, 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 Corn, you're not there. Oh. Yeah, you and I'm just, I put you in here just so you can see. You guys are over in the other room resting. So. Oh, I got gotcha. you. This is elsewhere. Yeah, this is elsewhere. Since you guys didn't go looking for these guys, I've got to kind of uh, let these guys figure out what they're going to do for the next uh, 10 hours. <laughs> Handle my... Is it, you're a dwarf, right, Handel? Yes. Yes. My stop friend, uh, perhaps 
antagonizing our captors is not the best idea. He continues, he continues to yell, ignoring, ignoring you. you. And all you're hearing is, As well, you hear a few of the other would. dwarves kind of chime in and try to throw a few uh, insults out there in Dwarvish. Which, speaking of, are you, speak, are you yelling in Dwarvish? Are you yelling in common? No, no he's, yelling he's yelling in common. In common. Okay. Frostbeard, can you can you see the trolls? Trolls? Those are trolls? Sorry, goblins. I've been here for so long. The mind's going numb. Any goblins out? Hindle crawls down, you know, creeps down the floor, looks through the crack, still yelling the whole time he's doing this. Nope, don't see him. They got one chained up though. What about those? What about those beasts? Well, those, well, those things, things are shifty. Yeah, you never know where they're at. Well, well um, oh, with that, with that so I'll, I'll show the info from the Arcana check that I did. So we need, what was it? Someone that has knock or... Or dispel magic. Dispel magic. Yeah, you're fairly certain that if someone we has that ability, to, that could possibly unlock these, uh, these mandibles from your wrists and your neck. I can, uh, I can knock. You said any... <laughs> Start beating on the door. We have, we to, have find to find a, a way out of here. Knock, I handle some of the uh, other doors. Will kind of be trying to calm you down a little bit. Says, so just, just calm down, my friend. You remember what happened last time? Someone tried to help, right? I did share that. My mind's. Yes. 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 I, I, yes. Sorry, sorry, thinking. I had, I had a plan, a plan but, now but now my plan's been foiled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hindle does something really stupid because Hindle would probably try this, realizing he's been a while since they fed him. They haven't put the beast away yet. He tries to knock the door open. <laughs> With like what? With his, his shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give me a uh, a strength check. <laughs> you don't have quite enough room to really get a run at it, so you you, you take about two or three steps back and you run forward and you kind of clang up against it and your heads ring a little bit and the other dwarves just kind of look at you and shake their heads. You need to stick to cooking. He does it one. He does it one more time, just just out of spite. <laughs> give me the strength. Oh, okay. This time you, you can hear the, the, the locking mechanisms in the door kind of shudder a little bit, but the door is not budging. He sets, he sets back, down. back down. The other dwarves just kind of shake his head, so you need to stick to your cooking. Guys, Guys we, we need nothing to cook. We need to, we get, need to get the goblins in here. That's what we need to do. Uh, yes, that's... And, then, and then once they're in here, we curb, we curb stomp them. No magic. no magic. And then, and then use, hope. Uh, chains to strangle them. And then you guys close. So you, basically, I'm, we're going to, because me and, uh, who, who else is playing? Who else is Kev. In the film? Besides? Kev. That's, that's Sylvia. Yeah, I mean, Kev. Yeah, I think we talked about the plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, like, going to lure the goblins in. And then once they come in, have the doors close the door behind them and try and take them out. Okay, how are you going to try to lure the goblins in? <laughs> so what I'm going to feign that because I have wild magic that it's affecting me. So if it goes off, I could potentially die, which the Mind Flayer wouldn't be happy with. So the thought is that they're here to make sure that we live so he can extract all the information. So they're going to come in because I'm convincing them that I'm going to die if they don't address it. And make a hoopla about it, too. Okay, so you're basically going to try to kill yourself? <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to pretend like I'm going to kill myself. But more or less, yeah. Okay, so before you do that, uh, handle with your commotion of banging that door... Are uh, you still looking at the little uh, peepholes, or are you just kind of... No, he went back to the corner and just sat down. Okay. And never mind. You don't see that sitting right outside your door. <laughs> All right, so tell me again what you, you plan on doing here. You're going to try to call up some magic? 
Uh, do you have... No, so, go ahead. so what I'm going to do is, because wild magic, there's the potential that the magic could surge up, which would then trigger the callers, which would deal a huge amount of damage to me and potentially kill me. So I'm going to feign that this wild magic is happening and I can feel it and cause a commotion in the hopes that we attract the goblins to come in and you know either remove the shackles or so that we can then jump them. Okay. Are, are the dwarves around you in on it? Uh, yes. we, we, would have, we would have shared it with them, but they would know. Okay. I'm assuming you shared this in common or dwarvish, or how did you share this? Uh, it would have been in common... I mean, we would say, say hey, Frostbeard, hey, Frostbeard, we think we found a way to get you some food, uh, but you need to listen to us. I'm going to rule Frostbeard's too far away from you guys to have a real decent conversation. Otherwise, I'd have to give you, like, give him, like, a perception check versus your, what would I say to make your, just make the perception check just based on his end to see if he can make out everything you're saying, if you're screaming that from your cell to his. Or were you just talking about the dwarves that are nearby you in your cells that ran on it? I think it's just the dwarves in the cell. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say so. We're, try we're trying to draw them into our cell. Okay. All right, so, and, and Abe Forth, what are you doing during uh, Sylvia's uh, little theatrical act here? I'll just, I'll just I'll, like, assist in, like, just yelling for the gods and... In like you know, screaming that she's she's dying, she's dying. Okay, that's kind of the direction you begin the other dwarves to do as well. Yeah, we'll yeah. Make a, make a big scene yeah. that would attract them to come in. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. Anything else before I kind of figure out what happens next? Uh. Uh. uh is, is, does the door swing inwards or outwards? Uh. When you came in here, you know that the, each door to your room, uh, swings out. Same as this door. Uh, on the doors on the other side of you, that those also swing out into the open area. Okay. okay. So, I'll so I'll stand in the corner, like, like near the, nearest the door. Okay. Well, I'm assuming you're instructing. You guys can't see it, but there's also doors in this little room on each side of you. Those, yeah, we would, yeah, we would yeah, do our yeah, best to convey messages to get them in on it. Okay. Just say, Just say when we act, follow, follow what we do. Okay. This is gonna be good. All right, so you convince to uh, doing your little uh, theatrical and fall on the floor wailing, and all the other guys start screaming and yelling out in common. Again, goblins don't speak common very well, but they're going to be screaming anyway to try to get their attention. And they're making a loud commotion. And Henry, you guys hear this. I'm not sure if you guys are going to try to chime in or yell what's going on. But if anyone's looking through the door, your commotion gets the attention of these two things, as they come close up to the door and just kind of standing there, hovering over the, the openings of the doors with their little tentacles kind of whipping through the air, just yep. waiting to kind of grab something if it sticks its head out there. But <laughs> some of the dwarves, at least in each room here, are going to be looking out the little peepholes. Uh, not very close once the beasts come up there, but they would have been conveying back to you that uh, of what they see, which is basically those the two beasts coming up to the doors, but they don't see any signs of the goblins. Uh, well, that, well that, that didn't work out exactly how I wanted to. I need uh, both of you to give me a wisdom check, please. Okay, let me just pull up that sheet. <laughs> Again, you get a disadvantage because you guys are suffering from exhaustion as well. <laughs> yeah, wisdom save it or just a straight risk check? Like check or save, it's got the same number on it, so it doesn't really matter. Oh wow, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so what? Uh, oh, my wisdom saving throw is plus five. It's, well, I guess no, it's not a save. It's been a check anyway. Okay, you guys you can't figure out why your plan didn't work here, but uh, you got you got the attention of those two uh, beasts. They're kind of hovering in front of the doors. The dwarves tell you, and some of the dwarves in the other room start kind of kind of piping down a little bit and not screaming as loud when they see the big beast come over by their door. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to keep on keeping it up to see if uh I mean what else, I mean, what else am I going to do in a cell? I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> so I'm pulling, so I'm pulling like, like a full like charade. I'm like, I'm like laying, laying on the ground spasming, spasming 
yelling, yelling out. out. Yes, most of the dwarves are yelling. They're, they're taking a little bit further back from the door because they don't want to be anywhere near these beasts over there, but they both continue to yell. Same thing. Hey, she's dying. She needs some help. Help, help, help the woman. She's just, we don't know what's going on. She's convulsing. All kinds of stuff in, in common, hoping that uh, someone else hears. But Nothing. you don't seem to be getting any kind of reaction like you're expecting. We've got those two beasts still sitting there, kind of purring, so to speak, on their paws. Kind of like a little cat ready to pounce with their tentacles kind of whipping up in the air. Oh. That was a good try, Sylvia. No one, no one ever believes my acting. Uh, Hendel, give me a wisdom check. You're hearing all this commotion going on over there. <laughs> I got like the w big wisdom group here. Holy shit. <laughs> all right. I mean, this is Hendel. You got a bunch of dwarves here. Hold on. Uh, Let's see how these dwarves do. Uh, trying to help you out here. Holy crap. I can't roll this bad for all of them. Okay, there. No, that's that's a three. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, crap. You only got two more. Oh, jeez. So I get the bad rolls out. Oh, the... holy oh. crap. The Okay. The One of the dwarves. Oh, yeah, you had one extra. Okay, that didn't help, but the last one did. All right, so one of the dwarves actually in the room with you. Kind of taps you and whispers in your ear, Abor. This is... So this is this is unlike them. Like we haven't we haven't seen them in what three four hours. That's just it doesn't make right. There's, there's got to be something wrong. Maybe like they're not there or something because you know they come by every half hour and just harass us or spit at us or something. We haven't seen them in three or four hours. There's, there's got to be something going on. Did they, leave Did they leave the doors unlocked? Has anyone checked to see if we can just open them? Uh, the dwarves will kind of peek out their little holes over best they can. Um, they can't really see past the displacer beast. Let me see. With their perception check. Oh, wow, his first one, he passes. Even at disadvantage. Uh, one of them will share with you that uh, he can see across the hallway. And uh, these doors right here, you'll know that those lead to the, the guard rooms where the goblins would come in and out of. And this door right here in the middle is like the main door where they would bring in and out the new prisoners or out the prisoners or whatever. But it will share with you that it looks like all three of those doors are still uh, closed. Well, oh, speaking of, this guy in the center would be screaming at you guys to shut the hell up. <laughs> he doesn't want to freaking die. It must be quarterly review time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're getting their 360 reviews going on right now. Damn. Well, well, my plot's, plot's for let's, uh, let's uh let's try all of us, all of us forcing this one door open. Well, wait, hold on there. Remember, there Remember, there are the two displacer beasts right outside the door. Well, well our door, door our door leads to the cell first. So we could at least get into their cell. Oh, I thought oh, there's oh, oh, you mean the side door here? Yeah, because yeah, we're sort of in the center dungeon, and then there's two cells on either side. Okay. Before we get to where the displacer beasts are. I see. Yeah, let's, let's give it a try. So you two are going to try to break down the door with brute strength? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, mine is like negative. <laughs> okay, so here, here's how I want to roll it. Don't roll it yet. Here's how I want to rule this. Uh, either both of you guys can roll it. Again, you'll have disadvantage. Or... One of you can roll it with the other one helping, and you just roll it regularly. Can we have the dwarves help us with that? Yeah, whether the dwarves help you or you help one of them, it doesn't matter. It, it's going to be the same roll. You either get, yeah, let's just help. You either do it separately, okay. and both of you have it at a disadvantage, or one of you roll it, and you roll it just regularly because everyone else is helping you kind of break down the door. And I'll give you three attempts at this. All right. all right. I say we. Ro I say we roll one and I'll roll. I'll roll, I'll roll one. You roll one. Then I'll roll one. All being helped by the dwarves. Oh, we just have the dwarves. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Batter up. Batter up. <laughs> Solid. Wait. So can I have the dwarf? 
to push and I help the dwarves. Oh, you want the dwarves to do it and then you help them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me pull up. I mean, to be fair, they probably are stronger. Let me pull up. Yeah, you know, I dwarves. Am not, I am not a very strong. All right, let me pull up a, a oh, random yeah. dwarf here to do this with. Tell you what, I'll go ahead and use Baron Sheet. No, I got Fuha. We'll use Fuha. Should me roll handles? No, I got Fuha's here. Yeah, yeah if, you use, if you use my, my sheet, jeez. No, I'm going to use Fuha's. Okay, so here you go. Here's... I'm a, str I'm a strong bugger. I'm rolling this for you, for one of the dwarves. Wow. What do you get? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Once more, you want, my step friend. You want the dwarf to do it again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's, 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 he's the highest chance. <laughs> this is funny. He's at, he's at six. Six. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Unfortunately, guys, he, he makes a good slam on it. Again, you he, he can hear kind of the locks and the, the doors kind of rattle a little bit, but the door doesn't give. <laughs> Blast these doors! Well, I, perhaps we should take advantage of this time and attempt to rest. We haven't been able to rest often, right? Because they keep coming back. Yeah, they've been coming by and harassing you guys every two hours. That's part of the reason why you have your exhaustion, plus the fact that they feed you maybe once a day. And then it seems like every other day the mind flare comes in and does his little toying with you yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, is there anything else you guys want to try here? Yeah. Are you going to try to rest and save your strength? Like, try and sleep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same, thing. same thing. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Are you in agreement with that, Handel? Yes. Yes. Okay. So how... Yeah, so I well, plus he's seen a few people eaten by the beast, so he's not in a hurry to be out there without our weapons. <laughs> All right, so how long are you guys planning on waiting? As long as it takes? Or are you going to, like, try again another couple hours? Yeah, what do you want to do? A handle will probably try again in a couple hours. Yeah, I think we should at least try and get a full night's sleep before we try again. Or at least shake the exhaustion. Right, so over the course of the next couple hours, the Displacer Beast will kind of come up here and, and gnaw on, on what's left of the, the beast here. Let me see. Okay. Let's both luck out. There's still enough meat in here. They're not worried about this guy yet. But you will see uh, the dwarves will kind of share with you that cage and one will kind of walk by the cage and hiss at this guy and reach out the tentacle and kind of smack him and catch it on his arm or his leg just to get him bleeding a little bit. And then they'll go back to eating their their uh, the dead guys over here. Definitely toying with him a little bit. But they'll rip off another piece these of him and things, head back into like these, uh, these corner cells here. These are like real cats. They're like assholes. <laughs> yeah, they kind of go over in the corner here and they take a shit. And they kind of walk off and they kind of <laughs> dust some of the, the dust over top of it. They put they, they crap right here in front of this door so everyone can smell it. Yep. Real cat. And this one saw what he did and he said, ah, that's a good idea. So he comes over here in front of this door, takes a big crap. And back over here and just continues eating in here. So, Hendel, you said you're going to try yeah. to get the door again after a couple hours? Yeah, it's for a couple hours. hours. Okay, give me another uh, strength. Again, um, I'll, if you want to have one of the dwarves help you, just roll it once at normal, not disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you kind of bang into it, you get their attention a little bit more. You see uh, this one kind of walk up here and he puts his, uh, his face up right next to the opening. Uh, anyone looking at the, at the hole? Well, I can't, well, look, I can't the look up the hole and bang on the doors with my shoulder at the same time, so no. no. It would have happened after you banged on it. It's what got his attention, basically. He came out after you oh. ran into the oh. door. I'm just asking, is anyone no. going to be No. Here? Okay. So, uh, you don't need a perception check. You can well, Handle's see, not stupid. You can see from the, uh, the bottom opening on the door, you see what looks like some kind of a tongue or something right there at the end of it, and you hear this sound like, ah, ah, and then a giant hairball with blood and guts kind of lands right into the uh, inside oh of your cell God. right there. Oh. <laughs> Is there anything we can use to pick the locks with in that hairball? <laughs> Alright, so 
You want to try again in a couple? Of, I'll let you. I'll let you try this every. I'll say every four hours now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try to get in a few hours. But... All right, so I'm trying. I'm basically trying to yeah. pass ten hours worth, and then I'll go back to these guys and see if they. Yeah. Try yeah. To find you guys. So I'll give you uh, two more attempts at slamming into this uh, this door. There's one. <laughs> oh, oh, even with a 19. Sorry, still not good enough. <laughs> so a couple more times, this cat goes. comes up here, and that last one, a cat comes up there, and it reaches one of its tentacles inside there. And let me see. And they'll try to, to grab the tentacle. Oh, hold on, man. First, we got to see if it even hits anybody. One, two, three, four. Should have had his kiss sheet up sooner. Do, do, do. He's reaching through there at disadvantage. Wow. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you see him is reach in and grab this guy right here below you. Oh shit! How many hit points these guys have? I gotta wake a look. Sorry. Where are the dwarf miners? How much was it? 14? Oh, I didn't know I could do that. What the hell? My screen's freaking out on me. Everything just minimized. Come back, roll 20. There you are. <laughs> Alright, so he reaches in, grabs a hold of that one. You see his tentacle kind of grab him right by the neck and then just kind of rips it clean right through the jugular and that guy drops blood kind of pooling on the ground below him Handel tries, tries to grab it okay go ahead and give me a let's see how do I want to rule this give me a give me a to hit with whatever you've got just to grab it <laughs> Oh, as you kind of reach out for it the last second, the thing rips his, his throat out, and you kind of manage to kind of wipe your, your hand across the, the blood-soaked uh, tentacle as it comes back, gets pulled back out through the opening. And it kind of, you lose sight of it. Not sure where it went to. Now you got a dead dwarf sitting there with part of his neck kind of wide open, pouring some blood out on you guys' next to your feet. You shove him over by the door in front of the crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crack okay all right so i'm gonna go back to these other guys 10 hours have gone by okay where were you guys at you were in this map all right 10 hours have passed everyone's awake everyone's feeling much better you see that usul has this odd glow about him not sure what exactly happened but uh he looks uh in much better spirits since he's had a, this long rest. And Warwick is the same way. He now kind of shares everybody, okay, now I'm ready to bust some heads. Thank you for that. But uh, I fear that uh, there's some some other dwarves here that we need to, to find. Isn't that right, Gilmag? And Gilmag and uh, Gaddy will both kind of share his sentiment that uh, they have no doubt there's other uh, dwarves that are here in the mines. And they're beginning to suspect that uh, just based on this room, the fact that goblins haven't been here very long, they're not sure if the goblins have left, or if they're still here waiting to pounce, or what's going on. But well, we, well, can, we can try and follow the tracks to see where they lead. Or do you know, do you know where they're being held prisoner? Oh, you're t asking uh, the two uh, dwarf yes. guys yes. who survived? Um, they'll tell you that, that yeah. most of the times when, when they were there, it's been several months, um, they were uh, basically blindfolded as they were taken out. Uh, since they've been working the mine, they've been staying in those little cells like where you guys first were when you had the, the encounter with the, the mine flare and the trolls. So they're not exactly okay. sure okay. Uh, where those places, where, where they are. So we'll probably, so we'll probably need to try and follow these tracks then. Because... Dwarves look at each other and says, that's as good a start as any. I'm okay with that. Alright. All right. So is everyone... Well, if everyone's now, done napping... Yeah I'm, right yeah, I'm right side up now. Everybody, oh yeah, Gilmag. Got a lot of guys to keep track of. So is everyone? Oh, in what are we doing with uh, 
What are we doing, what are we doing with, with Ryber and Tegan? <laughs> asking me. DM's not gonna answer. Yeah, I'm asking, yeah, I'm asking the, people, the, people the people in general. general. Like, what are we gonna do with these guys? And Don will kind of walk Should up. Should we to, bury them or something? And Don will walk up to Tegan and kind of smell the air a little bit. This is this is this is not good, guys. They're starting to smell. That's going to end up attracting something. Does anybody have that special spell, whatever it is, that keeps somebody from rotting? Shit! If only we had a spellcaster. <laughs> oh yeah, I actually do have that. Yes. Spell. Let me uh, check Lucille's sheet here. See if he has anything for you guys. I mean, my mage hand could wipe away the the detritus. It's not gonna wipe away the stench. Uh, let's see here. Fire will take away the stench. Well, there's a crematorium. Tigid, not Tigid. Uh, Usul will inform you guys that uh, he has a way to basically bring him back as something else, but I don't think that's going to help him at this point. Well, well, how long does, how long does that, that take, and how taxing is it? I think it has to be fresher to do it. He basically, it's a reincarnate, as we've told you, he has uh, capability of doing. But let me check the spell real quick. I don't think Tegan even wants that to happen, but I think he's... I wasn't, I wasn't talking about Tegan, I was talking about Riva. <laughs> Plus, they have to be intact, so I'm not sure Riva would even work. Uh, oh! Creature has not has been dead no longer than ten days. Bell forms a new adult body for it, then calls the soul to enter the body. If the target soul isn't free or willing to do so, the spell fails. Magic fashions a new body for the creature to inhabit, which likely causes the creature's race to change. Uh, recalls its former life and experiences, retains the capability it had in its original form, except it exchanged its original race for the new one. And changes its racial traits accordingly. Right, but before this uh, whole encounter happened, I did quite a bit of research on what happens if someone loses the brain. And everything I read pretty much says that if they don't have a brain, then they cannot be brought back other than with, like, like true resurrection or wish. So Usu will probably inform you the same thing, that uh, he doesn't think this reincarnate will, will work on eat. Well, it'll work on Tegan, but I don't think it'll work on Riber since you already discovered that He's got a hollow head, right? You can trick yeah. me play yeah. bongo drums on his head and, and then pull one of his eye sockets out. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> what should we do with them? The end down is going to look to I mean, we found a crematorium. Um, well, we could try and bury him in the wall somewhere, but... <laughs> it's not quite what you had in mind when you died, huh, huh Tegan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, I'm shaking my head here. <laughs> and I'd like to get him out on the surface and bury him in the forest. I know that's what he'd want, but shit. shit. And I'm just kind of shrug. And... Mm. You know, I've you know, I've, people, have, people have died before, and sometimes, sometimes you just gotta leave them where they, they lie. I guess so. That bed's, that bed's good enough. Well, there's Turn a, the bones in the bed, at least. Um, no, no disrespect, but is this, it's a dwarf, right? Um, river, river, yes. yes. I want to bury, I want to bury him. him. He's, He's supposed to be interred in stone. Oh, uh, I see. Yes. Can we cause can we cause the room to collapse on him, and then he'll be interred in stone? There's an idea. That might, that might draw literally everything towards us, though. Yeah. That's yeah. Scary, yeah. Destabilizing, Destabilizing one part of a cavern generally destabilizes other parts of said cavern. I'm just going to tuck Tiki in real nicely in this bed. And, probably the, and, probably uh, the best bed you're slept in. <laughs> I don't want to metagame you guys, just, but is there anything on any of your inspiration down, cards that will help you out here? I thought room might have gained you one. As well, should have had one from the beginning. Oh, yeah. how, does, how does how does that work again? No, mine oh, aren't gonna help us. I, all, I, all I have is one that gives me advantage on a, on a 
strength of strength have constitution have and saving throw. Right now, as we're discussing this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Why not? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I do not. I do not. All right, just thought I'd ask. I haven't looked at everybody's cards, so I don't know what they had. I don't know if I can even see Usul's. Let me pull him back down here. What does he have? Oh, come on. All right, how do I look at these when it's someone else without stealing it? I, I, you I click on it, and then you click below steel. steel. And click below steel. It doesn't work for me as a GM, evidently. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Just click on, just the, click on the card oh, itself. It just took a second. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not going to work. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. I just went through all, all the cards except for Only one thing. Only one thing is yeah. close, and that's Corns. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Well, we, well, we either leave him here or we burn him. We found a crematorium. And, and I don't want to just leave him here. You talking about Ryber or you talking about Tegan? Or both? Both. Both. That's you guys' call. You gotta make that decision as a group. I right, see. So, right, so, I'm gonna leave Tegan here and say the dwarves decide what they do with him. Okay. okay, I'm going to go, gonna go cremate, cremate. Riber, I guess. I guess. Back in this uh, room you guys found earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It'll probably, I mean, he's probably going to burn for a couple hours before he, you know, turns to, starts to turn to dust. Are you going to, like, stick around for that whole time, or are you just going to, like, set him on fire and go? What do you, what, what's your intention? Um, um well... well I'll go, I'll go gather, like, stuff to, burn. stuff to burn him with from this room where there was just a bunch of broken chairs and stuff. Okay, yeah, you'll be able to find um, um, excess dry wood that'll probably go up pretty quick. Yeah, and I'll, yeah, and I'll just, like, stack, it, stack up it up and, and set, set him alight and say some prayers and then leave. Alright, you guys doing the same thing with, uh, Tegan or not? I didn't catch what you said, Corrin, sorry. Uh, no. Uh, no, I was just going to leave him there. Were you guys in the bed? Yeah, just, yeah, just tuck him in nicely and okay. let him rest in peace. <laughs> okay, kind of walk up to him and snug him up tight like a little burrito there. I don't know if you give him like a little kiss on the forehead or anything like that. or But uh, you can definitely get the, you're starting to get a little smell from him a little bit. And it's been you know, almost 12, 16 hours since he, since he passed away. You can say your final goodbyes and leave him there. Whoop, what happened to him? Accident, Accident deleted oh, him. Okay. And poof, he disappears and goes. Apparently, you're going to try to burn him. <laughs> All right. So, Baron, you say just pretty much going to light him and then walk away, right? Um, um, yep. Okay. I'll, I'll rule it. it takes you like 30, 45 minutes probably to. Gather up everything, get the fire going to a point where you're you're confident it'll it'll uh, it'll burn. And you can see all the smoke kind of goes up in this room. It kind of tapers right in the center where you're standing in the in the ceiling, into like a, a chimney structure that goes straight up. All right. So your intentions now are to start searching for where the prisoners might be by watching or searching tracks. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're, gonna We're gonna follow tracks, I guess. Right. Who's doing the uh, the tracking? Um, well, I'll well, I will do it. Because I'm, I'm actually trained in, trained in that. Okay. I'm gonna let two people um, do it. There have to be two people there in the very front of the line. Uh, after that, the tracks will get kind of trampled by everyone else going that path. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll do the same thing I did before with the door. So if two of you are doing it, either both of you do it individually. Or one of you do it, and you get advantage by the guy helping you. So amongst yourselves, decide who's going to do the tracking and how you want to handle that. I'll take well, up, I'll take up well, the rear. I don't know much about nature. I'm I'm decent, I'm decent at following footprints, so if someone wants to just help me. Gee, if you only had a ranger who could track. 
Who could, who could, if only. Who could track was a key part there, right, uh, Tegan? Because <laughs> you didn't seem to do very good. Taking a level in Ranger. Just in uh, Tegan's name. Ice Storm can help because he's also he is a ranger, ranger right? Yes, he is. Uh, Quorn, you're sending those messages to me again. I'm assuming you meant to send them to Tegan. Uh, Emma? Uh, Emma? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Some of them can actually. The last three. No, I don't. No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> the hell's going on? <laughs> Alright, so I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I got sorry. distracted by all the texts over here to uh, the chat sending things to me. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so, who, who's taking the lead on the, the, the tracking? I will. I will. Okay, and who is if helping you? If someone wants to help me track. I, I, Thorm can help you. So, here's what I want to do. Line yourselves up over here. With everybody kind of facing this direction as a general marching order. Where do you guys want uh, Warak? Who asked you guys if you want him up the front, the middle, the rear guard? He can he can hold up the rear if he wants, in case we get attacked from behind. Okay. And then uh, the two dwarves with you. Do you want them going with you? Do you want to send them back to the place you came from? Do you want them to stay here? What do you want them to do? Um, um, it's probably safer if they stay with us, as long as they stay out of our way. And where do you want? If it comes to a fight. That's fine. Where do you want to Sewell? Um, he'd probably, he'd be, probably in be in the back half, half wouldn't he? Put him right here about that. And we'll put yeah. yeah. And Don, with his one stubby arm, is going to stand there next to Gilmag, and they're going to talk about how or when they're going to Try to build him a hand eventually. All right. So now, Baron, go and give me your survival check. Uh, no more exhaustion. Alrighty. Alrighty. So you can I just add. I never had exhaustion in the first try. So. Oh, very nice. Now give me two more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, not as good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, those are all good. All I needed was a 12 for you to uh, track these, uh, these tracks. And you see several spots where they kind of, uh, uh, kind of tee off or veer off in different directions. And lucky for you, you brought Gilmag along and he kind of recognizes some of the tunnels from where they were kind of clearing some of them out. And he kind of keeps you pointing the right direction, the combination of his, uh, his general knowledge of where you guys have been and you being able to track the, uh, the goblin prints are able to find the location of where you should be going. So let me move to their map. Then I'm going to drop you guys in probably because no one's there. Okay, so Bam was in front. Let me put you right here. So I thought I was going to put you right there. How about right there? There we go. And then who was behind you? There's two of there's me. There's two of me. There's two of you? That... Well, there's well, there's from left over. I, I just deleted oh, him. Okay. The other, the other me. The other me. Okay. Who was behind you? Left over. Left over. Um, um, right behind but right behind me was Tharum, I think. Dumbly, yes. Screw this. I'm just going to grab you guys <laughs> from the other map. That'd be easier. You just won't be in the right order, but... All right, so here's the hallway. Oh, I guess I can get rid of Warak there. The track's kind of well, leading down I'm this hallway. Leading the way. So put yourself just to right here, Baron. Then everyone else kind of fall in behind in the, the order you've got there. Unless you want to move up, it's up to you guys. Somewhere around here. Yeah, sure. I was back there. All right, these two dwarves that you, the survivors, are going to kind of be reluctant to go in there, and they will share with you guys from their time being in there. And again, this is where, uh, when they were in here, it was guarded by 
uh, several goblins. Occasionally, there'd be a troll in here. And there was also some kind of uh, beasts inside the general uh, holding area of where all the cells were. They basically kept watch over all of the, the prisoners, making sure they didn't break out of their individual little cells. Huh. Huh. What sort, what sort of, of beasts? They'll kind of look at each other and kind of shrug a little bit. It says, they're almost like panthers, almost. But they've got like these long tentacle looking things that come off their back or their neck or something like that. And they're real nasty, foul beasts. But I'm not sure what exactly they are. Does that sound, sound familiar? To you, Baron? Yeah. Yeah. Where was your hometown area? Um, where was it again? Because so I'm not sure we ever decided where he actually lived. It was like the Furward Mountain or something like that. Some, some mountain yeah. region. Yeah, it was around there. You can give me a history check. It was actually, mountains. Everybody give me a, a history check. To see if uh, okay. Okay. you've ever heard of what they described to you guys. I am, I am great at this. And if anybody has a background of like uh, being in the Underdark... You can roll with advantage, which I believe that would be you, Tharum. Yes. Oh, you rolled a 21 anyway. Okay, is that everybody? I guess so. I'm not going to... Ooh. Oh, you rolled a 21, so I'm not going to roll for him. I could have rolled for Endon. All right, Tharum will, will hear their description of that. And and Tharum, you, you've never encountered one of them before? But from the way they, they described it, it sounds like something that one of uh, your uncles once told you about, uh, called a displacer beast. And that uh, they're quite foul creatures, and those tentacles are the main thing they use to attack with. Do I know? Do I know? Like they're like they're shifty bastards, or? Nah, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have known that. Again, all you would know is you're you're, you're from stories of them. You never actually encountered one. So the thought that, uh, you know, knowing that they are displaced, uh, you won't know that. Okay. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll uh, pass this on to the party and just say, hey, you know, a story my uncle, my uncle once told me uh, comes to mind when I think about this. Uh, all I know is they're cat-like and they have tentacles that they use. To attack. Besides that, Besides that I, I can't really recall. Huh. So. Huh. Well, well, I've never made a, I've never made a cat, cat I couldn't kill. Yeah, one second, guys. I'm, get, I'm, get, I'm getting a sheet up here, so hold on one second. Don't get, don't get, don't get, don't freak out just because I'm getting a sheet up. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. We're all going to die. <laughs> Then I'll explain what uh, you see down that first uh, opening there. Tell my, tell my players that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you guys are in full health this time. That's a lot different than when you died, Tegan. That's true. That's true. All right, so when you look into that first room uh, to your left there, Baron, uh, you see this room from your vantage point. You can see several sets of uh, manacles and chains that appear to be like attached to the walls. Um, they look fun. They look fun. Towards the center of the room, you can see... Partial looks like some kind of a table in the middle of it, but you can't see all of it because it's further back into the room deeper. Um, you can also see along the back wall over here, looks like there's several, uh, some kind of small knives or daggers or hatchets or something hung up on the wall as well. Torture weapons, Torture weapons probably. Can't answer that unless you want to go look further. Uh, doesn't need to be looked at, probably. Do we want to go? Do we want to go in there, guys? Guys, I haven't hit anything for a while. Right, right. Let's keep going. Are we being quiet, we being quiet or not? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Maybe we should. Try Maybe we should try to be a little quiet. Okay, hold on. Before everybody rolls, uh, how do you want to do this? Um, we can either all roll individually, or I can let. Uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? 
I'm going to roll randomly for one of you guys to do it. How about that? Or you guys can all do it. Which which uh, do you want to do? Uh, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to speak for everyone else, but let's just all do it. It'll be great. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. May the odds, May the odds ever be in your favor. Uh, let's see it then. Everyone roll me a stealth. I'm going to leave a new soul crack out of this for right now. Just you guys. Um, um, do we want to leave? Do we want to leave those? We'll leave those two dwarves behind. The because I don't want to get. Them. I don't want to get them killed. Okay, be sure that with them. They'll they'll definitely be okay with that. They can stay. They with can them. stay with Usul and Warwick, who can guard them. I guess. I guess, so. or something. Right. Right. Stealth. Stealth. Check with, Check with disadvantage. disadvantage. Okay, I see them all. Oh, Eight. that's nice. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, think you're being pretty stealthy, Baron. You're not so sure. You can, you hear it. You're not sure if everyone else can hear it, but your your armor's making a lot of noise that you think as you're going down the hallway. So go ahead and move yourself. Creak. Go ahead and move yourself, guys. However far do you want to go. Uh, okay. Mm. The room? Are you looking back in that room again, or are you just going by? Oh, I guess you're just going by. <laughs> this one right here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at. I'll I'll check in there. All right. So hold on, to the other guys, before you go any further. All right, the room. Ollie. Ollie. Right. You going all the way in there at the room, or are you kind of being stealthy and looking around, or how how are you just, going about this? Uh, just, just like peek it in. Sorry. Okay. So give me a perception check. Oh, Trig, but you don't see anything? I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. Let me fix your uh, token, maybe. May I give you a sight for some reason? Yeah, all I see, yeah, all I see is just background white background, background with tokens, tokens everywhere. everywhere. You see a white background? Yeah. Players yeah. Have sight. Players have sight. All right, let me do this. I'm going to cancel. I'm going to delete your token and drop you in again, see if it makes a difference. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Is that any better? Uh, no. Uh, no, it's the same thing. What the hell? Huh. Huh. Has sight, 60 feet. Well, let me click off on it. Save. Let me do it again. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Roll 20 technical stuff. Awesome. Did that do anything? Uh, uh hang on. I'm just going to refresh. That's going to be my next suggestion is you refresh. Do anything. Anyways, you, Anyways, you guys keep going and do your thing while I calculate. All right, Theron, with that roll, you look into that room there, and you'll see the same thing. You'll see chains up against the wall, manacles, uh, various it's like knives and hatchets and butcher knives kind of mounted on the wall. And that center table, you'll see uh, several spots on there where it looks like there were some kind of straps on there. And uh, it's the entire table is stained in blood, and you can see... Some dried crusties, pretty much all over it. Um, that it, it's definitely something bad's happened in here. But not for, but not for some time. Uh, you'd have to go up and actually look at the table and try to discern that if you want to figure out how long it's been there. You were just peeking around the corner, sure, I'll, as I'll, you told me. Yeah, I'll go up there. Yeah, go up there. Okay, mm -hmm. Give me a quick investigation. Investigation. Is this, is this is this the underdark by the way yes. no. so I would, so I would get advantage for it says oh no it's just double proficiency never mind yeah, you should better roll on one of those uh, proficiency things at the bottom if you got like double proficiency but even with 11 that's good enough you just need a 10 to get it um as you kind of inspect a little dried crusty a little bit more um, you can tell that uh, uh, this is probably five to seven days old to, from what you can tell since uh, this blood is kind of congealed and kind of dried and, and uh, left these marks upon the table but uh, seems to mostly be pulled around where some of the straps were towards uh, one end of the table okay is there anything else in the room? Uh, other than what I just told you. It's like you can see there's some chains and manacles tied to the wall. 
some of it longer, some are shorter. And there's several uh, uh, daggers and hatchets and uh, butcher knives like that kind of hung on different uh, racks upon the wall. Okay, then I'll just, uh, there will be like a couple of uh, uh, small buckets, uh, a couple of them in the corner that mm -hmm. are kind of filled with the same dried, crusty crap that you kind of saw on the table. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, all right, so, all right, so I'll, I'll go back to the main hall. Or main uh, hallway. You're not hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will pass. Okay. All right, so, uh, Baron, are you still trying to be stealthy? Look around this corner, or what? Do you? What's your intention? You and Corn. Yes. Yes. I am being, I am being stealthy and looking around. Okay. So if you're gonna go into the openings there, you roll me another stealth. Okay. Okay. So one of these. Yeah. So if you go in there and now roll me another. <laughs> okay. Oh, sad day. All right. So stay right there, Quorum. Are you going to just wait for Baron, or are you going to go forward into the other opening there? Don't move anywhere else, Baron. Stay right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was going to no, wait, wait for everyone else, basically. Okay. So you're not going any further. You're going to wait and see what what, what Baron sees when he goes in that room, correct? Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm mostly watching down this hall, waiting to make sure we don't get flanked. Okay. Um, trick me. What's your intention? As you see, Baron kind of going around the corner to that room. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and be stealthy and, and follow, follow him. Okay, again, if you're right behind him, you give me a stealth check as well. You got it. You got it. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. When my, uh, character sheet, when I refresh my character sheet. Right. Pull it. Stealth. Stealth. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're stealthy. Glad you're stealthy. Ooh. Ooh. I, thought you guys I thought you guys were laughing because I rolled like a two. Oh, no. You did roll two. Two of them. Alright, so Baron. Uh, Trigby, go move yourself right behind Baron. There, okay. There, okay. And then the earth crumbles down on you. You both die. Baron. Woo. Woo. You see, this room is littered with uh, makeshift bedrolls and mats all across the floor. Uh, you can see okay. Okay. various places along the floor have like like small bones of some kind. Uh, a lot of them are kind of piled up in the the far uh, corner over to the right. Uh, let's see what else. Um, again, along these little uh, coves in the wall here, you see there's uh, several. Uh, almost every one of them, there's several crude-looking spears, some old rusty short swords couple of short bows and a few loose arrows laying down um, give me a give me a perception okay from, from the way these these uh, bed rolls and all these uh, weapons and stuff are kind of just disheveled all the place you kind of believe that uh, Whoever, whatever was in this room left in a big hurry. Okay. Okay. Huh. Huh. Well. Well. I'm gonna go. Over I'm gonna go over to the wall and pick up one of the spears. Okay. Go ahead. Drake, will you? I'm assuming you're standing right behind him, right? Uh. Actually, I'm, actually, I'm gonna go to the room a bit right of us. Okay, so when you see Baron going and get his spear, you're going to kind of turn back around and go through the other opening there, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me just make sure, Quarren, that wasn't your intention, right? You're still watching down this hallway here, right, Quarren? Yep. Okay, yep. Give me a perception check, Quarren. Okay. All right, Trigby, you're trying to be stealthy up here, right? When you enter this doorway, give Correct. me another stealth. Correct. Okay. All right. Pretty much what I explained to uh, Baron, you see the exact same thing in this part of it. You know, a bunch of the sh uh, 
bed rolls are kind of not really in place. It's like they're kind of wadded up in certain spots on the on the floor. You see some of the footprints kind of uh, a lot of them congregating right where you're standing actually, and kind of all leading out. Uh, same thing in these little alcoves right here. You can see various uh, crude looking spears and short swords and some very uh, very poor quality uh, weapons. All right. All right. All right. So then I let's go back to corn in the room here. Once I unless something else you want to do with that, Drake B. Uh no. Uh no, okay. nothing else. Uh, the room. What are you doing at this point? Uh, I'm, gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and fall asleep. <laughs> I just said I'm gonna go ahead and fall asleep. <laughs> I thought that too. I thought that too for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm really tired, guys. Just so what do you, I'm, a I'm a narcoleptic boy. So what do you mean by follow suit? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to follow them in the direction they're heading. You're following Baron or you're following Trigby? Actually, I'll, I'll head down this way, sorry. Okay, stop right there. All right, Corn. so you see yeah. uh, uh, Trigby and Baron heading to those rooms, and you also see the room kind of walk up around you and kind of walk down the uh, the hallway. What would you like to do with this? Um... I guess I'm just going to stand here and keep an eye on all the doors. <laughs> keep an eye on... So, you're so you're surrounded by dwarves. Oh, you keep an eye on the dwarves or keep an eye on the doors? What'd you say? Dwarves. Oh, dwarves. dwarves. Okay. I'm like, damn, that's a lot of doors to watch, Corn. But okay, that's guess a lot of dwarves, too. <laughs> so, you can only look one way or the other. So, just kind of... Which, which still, area... I'm you're... still looking down okay. this hall. Okay, so you're kind of keeping your focus down this way, right? Right. All right. So back to unless Baron, is there something you want in Fuha to do? I saw you move him up. That's why I asked. Um. He's um he's no, he's just waiting. I just, I had, I just I had forgotten that I can, that I can control still control him. For a second there. For a second there. Endon is pretty much staying back here by the two dwarves. Uh, for now, I'm gonna leave Usul and Warak out of this. I mean, technically they're here, but I'm not gonna try to play six I mean, characters. Tonight. I mean. <laughs> You should, probably yeah, you should probably leave Indon out too, considering he's useless. pretty useless. Hey, with one hand. With one hand. He didn't hear you say that. He can still stab he's you. Got he's got a sword. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't see it coming. It'll really hurt. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. All right, Baron. So back to you. What are you What are you doing at this point? You said you picked up one of the spears. Um, I pick up. A spear I pick up a spear. And there's nothing, and there's nothing else of interest in here. So I'm gonna walk back out. Okay. Go and move yourself. Trigby, are you doing anything else in this room? Uh, no, I'm gonna, uh, no, I'm gonna uh, follow uh, Thurun down. Okay. Go ahead and move yourself. All right, Corner, keep an eye on all these dwarves. And they all seem to be kind of making their way down this hallway here a little bit further. And your perception check before, you didn't really notice anything. So, what would you like to do now? All right, well, all right, well I'll follow them down here. Check out, check out inside this room. Okay, one second. I gotta double check if that door is closed or not. Yeah, that door is actually closed. And, uh, yeah, it's closed at this point. You can't really see in that room. So, Alright, well, that's same a... for that one and the one across the hallway. All three of these doors are closed. Seems like, Seems like a semi telling sign. All, th uh, all three so, of these, the door right in front of you is like a single doorway. It's uh, made completely of stone. At the end of the hallway here, it's like a set of double doors. They're much larger, much taller. Uh, but uh, again, they're both made completely out of stone with some very fine uh, dwarven artwork you can tell in the front of them. And uh, same thing with this one. It's just a single doorway uh, made completely of stone. Uh, I'll check to see if this door is locked. As you kind of reach for the uh, the ring handle in the front of the door, you'll give it a tug, and you can hear the locking mechanism kind of catch as you try to pull it open. Does anyone have a lock pick? <laughs> I do. I do. I can try and jam, can try and jam my dagger in there, but that usually doesn't, that usually doesn't work. <laughs> ben pulls a... A uh, crowbar out of his bag. I have a lockpick. Endon kind of sees you from in the hallway, pulling out the crowbar, and he'll get interested. Says, "says what, what, what are you guys doing?" 
What, what's going on? Apparently there's a Apparently lost, there's a lost door. Door. Locked door. And he kind of looks over at Baron with his crowbar, and he looks back at himself with his little stub of a hand and says, Well, I used to be good at that. I'm not so sure... I can try. I can try. I can do it now. And he looks I can, back I can try. It'll be, It'll be great. Crowbar? No. With no, the with the block pick. Oh, you want me to give you my lock picks? They're just, just whatever I need, whatever to, I need to pick a lock. They're kind of rolled. We'll see what kind happens. Of rolls eyes a little bit. Look back at you. He says, "You know these are these are elven lock picks, right? They're not short, stubby ones like the dwarves use, right?" It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure. He seemed kind of sigh a little bit. Says, "Well, this is this is a pretty funny uh, scenario here. A one-armed elf and a a dwarf with uh, lock picks, and he kind of takes it, pulls it out of his pocket, and kind of throws them at you." Just have okay. at it. Okay. See what you can do with it. All right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go try and pick the lock, I guess. <laughs> All right. So you do not have proficiency with this, or do you? No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, but I have a thing I that I can add half my proficiency bonus. Um, my, rem um, my remarkable uh, athlete, I can add uh, my, profic uh, my proficient half my proficiency bonus to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check that doesn't already use my proficiency bonus. Look at you. Fancy pants. All right, so yes. you're, going, you're going to try yes. to unlock this thing. Uh, okay. That okay. Right we'll add that. Lock, lock picks. Well, oh, actually, actually, it's Steve's tools, tools, but I'll just put lock pick. Uh, uh, not I'm not proficient. Okay, and I would have informed you. He wants them back when you're done. <laughs> oh, not strength. Oh, not strength. So, actually, so actually uh, take. Uh, is the plus like, is the like plus six what you have gotten three anyway? Off three off that. Three off of that. Um, no, um, just, no take, just take three off of it because it's, it's my strength. I didn't. I accidentally hit it before I changed strength to dexterity. So just take three. So just take three off it. I was gonna give you even advantage of this too, since you're a dwarf. Since this is a dwarven uh, lock here, but you still didn't get it. So you can figure oh, yourself. You, know, oh, you can hear like you know, here's the first tumbler, and get the second tumbler, and the third one you hear a big clunk. And you instantly know that sound means you screwed it up. Says so you didn't actually, get the lock. Actually, it's my proficiency, it's my proficiency bonus, bonus uh, uh, rounded up, so it actually should be twenty because jack, jack of all trades is rounded down. So it's giving me, so it's giving me plus one instead of plus two. Son of a bitch! All right, so again, I make twenty. I make twenty. You clink, you clink, and your third one, you're like, oh, it's, it's right there. I just almost got it, and you hear a click, and then the the, the lock mechanism unlocks, and you can. Hear the kind of bars coming out from the bottom and the top of the, the door as you uh, trigger the mechanism. Well, so the door's unlocked. It's not opened, yes. but uh, you've unlocked it. There we go. There we go. I would, I, I would like uh, to give right. the lock picks back to Indon. Indon kind of shakes his head a little bit as you hand them back to him. He says, uh, I'll remember this day. My mother, used My mother used to tell me doors were never useful. <laughs> Stupid bitch. <laughs> yeah, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> Alright, so Baron, I'm assuming you would have uh, shared with everybody that you were, were successful at unlocking this. At least you think you were, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's unlocked. Okay. What do you guys so, want to do with that? So, are we gonna what are we going to open it? <laughs> And Don's like, well, you unlocked it. Don't you want to open it up and see what's in there? Open up your prize? Okay. You okay. don't want to. I, 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 I pick my spear, the spear that I have commandeered back up off the wall and slowly open the door. Uh, just before you open the door, just so you know, that spear you've got, it's a, a very poor spear. It's going to be a damage of 1d6 minus 1. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I'll change that then. Um, you still want to use it? <laughs> Yep. Yep. Still a spear. Still a spear. <laughs> so, too, bad no one too bad no one has mending. So just so I'm clear, you're holding it like well, a uh, melee weapon, not like you're getting ready to throw it, correct? Well, well, we'll see what happens, we'll see what happens but I'll probably end up throwing it. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to open up the door, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right now I'm using, right now, I'm using it as a melee okay. weapon. Alright, so you open it up fast, you open it up slow, how are you doing this? Slowly. 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 Okay. And looking through. And looking through. So you start to kind of pull the door open. You, you hear the bottom of the door kind of scraping along the stone there. A couple rocks kept catching oh. a little bit. Oh. It's making it's making quite a bit of noise as you're scraping it across there. So it is. So it is quiet. not quiet. <laughs> it is not. 
So you slowly starting to open it up. I'm assuming you're going to peer inside there. Yes. You don't, you don't yes. notice anything, but you open it up. Say like the foot, and you can kind of get a look inside there, and nothing jumps out at you. Um, let's see, what can you see from just looking through the opening? Uh, okay, from this vantage point, you'll see this wall over here, and you can see what looks like a series of chains that are uh, attached to the wall on hooks that lead up into the ceiling. Okay. Okay. Um, um, but there's nothing, but in, there's there. nothing in there, so I'll just push the door the rest of the way open. You can see from that little opening. You have to open up all the way yeah. if you want to get a yeah. full description. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I open it up all the way. Okay. So, again, you can see... Let me count them. One, two, three, four, five... Uh, six, seven, eight. You see, eight chains uh, pretty much start from uh, this section of the wall and all along this wall. Uh, one right here, and then one in this corner here. Okay. Okay. And also, you see up against... Are you going in the room, or are you standing right there? Uh, uh, I'll go in the room. I'll go in the room. You wouldn't have seen this chain right there if you didn't go in the room. Also, in this corner, you'll see hanging on the wall, and like a small little shelf right there, of this strange-looking uh, flute. A flute. A flute. Um, um. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey, there's a flute in here. <laughs> Trigby likes. Trigby likes flutes. Well, do you want, well, the, flute do you want the flute then? Is it like attached, is it like attached to, the to the wall or anything, or is it just sitting on a no, shelf? It's, it's got like a little uh, leather strap on it, like maybe you could wear it around your neck if you wanted to. But it's not, you know, it's not you know, physically preventing you from taking it. Okay. Okay. Pick it up. Pick it up. And, and give it to Trigvia. Like, like hand it out through the door. <laughs> <laughs> Trigvia, you want anything with that? Uh... uh I will, put it, I will put it around my neck like a necklace for now. Okay. Are either one of you going to, like, take a closer look at it? You're just going to, like, hey, look, a flute. I'll put it around my neck. Oh. oh. Yes, I will. Yes, I will examine it. chokes you to death. <laughs> That's, why That's why I didn't put it on. <laughs> Give me an uh, investigation with advantage, Trigby, since you are a bard. Okay, good enough. Um, you look over the flute, and uh, by instrument standards, this is a very subpar flute, from what you can tell. And uh, being a, your background in performance and being a bard, you'll quickly recognize that this flute appears to only play three notes. Which, you know, that's a very, very crude type of instrument that only the, the dumbest of performers uh, will even attempt to try to use. Good thing I didn't try. Good thing I didn't try. <laughs> Is my performance is, my performance like, is negative like, like negative one? <laughs> These goblins don't appreciate good music. Yeah. Ugh. All right, there's pretty much nothing else in the room that you can tell from this point. It's like they're, uh, they're you'll see like a chair sitting in there at one point, and you will see the other door uh, over here leading to the south, and it has a, uh, a small <laughs> opening uh, just slightly above where you could see. It's like a little slightly above your head. And there's another one about a uh, foot and a half, two feet off the ground as well. A two by six opening in the door. Okay. Okay. Sorry, two inch by six inch, not two foot by six foot. <laughs> that would not be small. No, that'd be a relatively large one. I mean, I mean I'm, a I'm a little hazy on the feet anyway. I use the metric system, I but I know roughly what you mean. <laughs> two, inches two inches is five centimeters. Yeah. Um, um, I'd look. Through I'd look the through opening, the opening. I guess. I guess. Okay. Give me a perception check. Perception. Perception. Oh! <laughs> you kind of get. I, I, try to I, look I try to look through, and something gets in my eye. <laughs> That's what you do. You see the one that's like just above your head. You try to get in your tippy toes. 
you're kind of like grabbing yourself on the side of the wall like you're trying to crawl up like Spider-Man. And all you can see is like the ceiling inside the room in there. That's all you can see. You just can't quite get tall. It's clear, guys. It's clear, guys. We should go in. <laughs> sure, you had a good angle on that. Oh, no, you got, yeah. oh, no, you got yeah, that, that door pretty good. I guess I'll trust you. <laughs> Well, you, can take a well look. you can take a look if you really want to. No, man, I trust you. Yeah, you, know what? you know what? All I can see is the roof. You take a look. Take a look. All right, all right, all right. I'll get, a bit I'll get a bit closer and peer through. Okay, right ahead. <laughs> all right, so you, you can obviously see a better, a better look than him. You don't see the ceiling, but uh, you will see right in front of you. Uh, there's a cage straight out in front of you and some kind of something in the bottom of it, but you can't quite make out what it is. Well, there's, well, there's a cage and something in it, and I have no idea what. Okay. Okay. Could be someone, Could be someone in need, like another dwarf that's been captured, or... Could be a monster that was that mind flayers minion or something. Who knows? I don't want to wait to find. I way to find out. Let's go through the. Other Let's door. go through the other door. <laughs> Which door? There was, another... there was another door over here, wasn't there? Yeah, that's another door that was closed, it's just like the one that you uh, lockpicked to get through. And there's also the large stone double doors here at the end of the hallway here. All right, well, check in the other door. That's door logic for you. I will, I will, I will, I will the check the stone double stone doors with my proficiency in stone cutting to see if I can, if I can determine, anything. determine anything from. Uh, I, mean, I just don't want to get ambushed again. We've got ambushed plenty. So, give me a little more description of what you're looking for, Trigby. So I'm looking. So I'm looking to see like how 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 they open and. You know, if they would be like, if there be anything, if there be anything special about these doors, or if they're just door doors. If they open normally, is that what you're trying to find out? Sorry, yeah. I, I don't yeah. mean to be combative. I'm just trying to make sure I understand what you're what you're looking for, so I can answer accurately. Yeah, just, yeah, just so that if they open nor so they open normally, or maybe if they're like slide down, slide up, down, slide up, slide to the side. Just determine more, just determine more about the doors and how they. Open because they're you said they're carved out of stone and dwarf, right? right? Got dwarving carvings and different uh, uh, depictions of like Morden and you know, just different uh, depictions of dwarves doing different kind of activities along the wall. But uh, you wouldn't need to roll something like this. I mean, you can tell by looking at it that uh, there's no rings or, or handles on this end. So your recollection is these doors kind of open away from you. They open up into the the room beyond. Catch all that? I, I, okay. Yeah, I caught that. Yeah, I caught that. Hmm. Hey, Quarren, what were you doing? You were looking at the other door, or what were you doing? Yeah, I'll save it. Yeah, I'll save it. This one's locked as well. We should just go, we through, should the just go through the front door, guys. Well, we, well, we could, find another, could find another broken goblin flute or something. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. If you've heard the recorder, you'll know that this flute is far worse. Yeah, but maybe, yeah, but maybe there's something good behind this door, number two. I love the recorder. I love the recorder. <laughs> and Don just kind of standing there holding his, uh, his lockpicks out on one finger. It's like, come on. Show us how it's done, dwarf. Oh, me again. Oh, me again. Am I doing this, am I, again? Am I doing this again? Step up, Baron. <laughs> <laughs> Do some stretches. Oh, that room? I'm sorry, what were you doing at the room? Yeah, can I, have, can I just check out the room that just came out of? Okay, what are you looking for or hoping to find? or and Otherwise, you'll, you'll see the same thing uh, they just, did. Just see the hole. Oh, you want to look through the uh, opening? The opening, I mean. Okay, yeah, you can give me another perception check. Yeah, sure. Sure. Is that going to be with the, uh, on the, uh, what you call them? The natural explorer thing? Yeah. Actually, hold on, Therum. Okay. Um, you've been here for several months. It's been a while since you've been here, but you would actually recognize mm -hmm. uh, this room vaguely. 
Uh, same thing as the other doors would have, would have shared with you guys. The fact that uh, through these double doors is, is the, the main uh, uh, holding cells where they would uh, bring in either new prisoners or those that just couldn't quite hack it from a mercenary standpoint or a, or a miner. And uh, that's where they would keep some of the lesser skilled uh, dwarves locked in place there. You were there very briefly when you were first ambushed before uh, the mind flare kind of sat down with you and pretty much washed your brain into becoming his little lackey as uh, mercenary for hire, so to speak. But you can still try to look through the little opening there if you want the perception check. Now, do you get that with advantage, or is it just uh, the double proficiency? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's just double proficiency. Okay. So, a natural well, explorer. I think, in the, in the, I think in, the, in the book it's advantage, advantage but in the on the sheet it just says double proficiency. Is it in your uh, your skills section? Natural or tool section? Yes. Yeah, you yes, get expertise yes, yes. with that. That's what that little section under was. When I set it up, that's that's what that should give you that, that expertise. Yeah. When you, yeah. when you make an intelligence or wisdom check related to your favorite terrain, uh, your proficiency bonus uh, is doubled double if you're using a skill that you're proficient in. Right, I guess why you see the 8 down there next to the Natural Explorer. So again, anyway, the 13, you'll look in there and you'll, you'll see the same thing that uh, I guess Quarren did. You'll see the cage out there and you'll know that from your time in there, the cage is new. The cages were not there when, when you first came in there. But again, it's been... It's been months since since you were in here, and uh, give me a uh, give me a medicine or survival. Medicine. Okay. I'm just seeing if you would recognize what's in the bottom of the cage. Is that for medicine as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's because it's a wisdom. Both are wisdom. Okay, yeah, kind of like a survival. Oh, that's that's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll allow it. So you'll recognize barely uh, what's at the bottom of that, that, that cage is remnants or bits and pieces of uh, a dwarven body. There's very few pieces left, but you do see the, uh, the tail ends of a dwarf foot. You know, it's much more meaty, much more robust than all the other races. So you'd recognize that that's a bits and pieces of a dwarf body on that cage. And uh, do I recall if, if, if before when I was a prisoner, if it was just like they just held you and the mind flare turned you or people were killed? You were only in there for a couple of days and uh, based on, on okay. you know, give me a history to see how much you actually remember. Sure. Let's do it that way. Oh, very nice. Okay, you remember everything vividly because you were pissed off that you were caught. So, you know, inside this room, there are several cells along the outside perimeter. Um, just out of character. Um, at, let me roll, see how I remember this. Okay, yeah, you also remember that uh, the Mind Flare had some kind of beasts uh, also that would patrol this, uh, this holding cell as well. Um, you have no idea if they were in there permanently or if they just escorted the mind flare or whatever, but um, you know that uh, you saw some other kind of beast kind of making its rounds inside there as well. But uh, again, you know there's there's extra cells all along the perimeter. Uh, each one of those have locks on the doors. The doors are very similar to the one you're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. I think that's about all you would remember. All right, so, uh, do I usually know, you know, that's fine. Gotcha. <laughs> and I'll pass this on to the, the group. Okay. All right, so Baron, you're going to try to lockpick this, uh, this door now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. Door. 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 Did you roll it? I don't see it, or are you just trying to find it? Oh, there you go. Oh! <laughs> yeah, it's right there. Oh, it's right. right. You stick the, the first little uh, pin inside there, and you instantly hear a crunch. 
and then you you pull the, you pull the, the lockpick out, and the end of it's kind of bent a little bit, not where it's supposed to be. And Don's sitting there with his arms crossed and one foot tapping a little bit. So yeah, that's that's what I expected the first time. He pulls his hand out, waiting for the lockpicks to give them back to him. Can I try and straight? Can I try and straight? In the no, and and Don's gonna walk up to you. And he's gonna take. Give me those damn things. I don't need you breaking any more of them. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, uh, yeah, the door then. Which door? Yeah. yeah. Let's go with the door to the south. The double doors. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, and Don, as you, uh, who, who's uh, taking a look at the door, trying to figure out if you. What do you want to do? You want to break it? You want to? What's your intention by looking at it? I'll just. I'll just. Can I just? Can I just push it open quietly, quietly or slowly? <laughs> as soon as you give it a little bit of a nudge, you you feel right away that it, it's got some kind of uh, locking mechanisms at the uh, the top and the bottom of the doors. Are they visible? Are they visible to us, us no, or no, are they They're inside hidden? the door itself. Well, I turn around. I turn around to them and say, "Guys, I think this opens from the inside." And you don't see any kind of a, a spot to to enter a key or any kind of a lock or anything on the door. Wait, wait, wait guys. We found a, we, we found a flute. Walls next to it at all? I'm sorry. The room. What'd you say? Is, is there anything on the walls? Near the door, like on the other side of like the wall here, or I mean anything that will like uh, operate like the door. Basically, basically. Yeah. no, there's nothing on the walls there. Yeah. It's, it's clean, fine stone surface uh, next to the wall and on the okay. next to the door as well. I'm gonna blow. The I'm gonna whistle. blow the whistle. <laughs> All right, so there's three notes on the whistle. Uh, just tell me one, two, or three. Which note are you gonna play? One. Are you trying to decide, or what are you doing? Uh, I'm trying. To... Uh, I'm trying to. You know, it's gonna be that nervous uh, to decide. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the two right in the middle. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Let's see here. How do I want to do this? Uh. Trigby, give me a perception check. Um. Baron and Theram, you give me a perception check at disadvantage. Ice. Another two. Another two. <laughs> All right, Trigby, you blow that. Uh, you blow the flute note, but you don't hear anything. It doesn't make a noise. But however, you do hear on the other side of the noise some screaming and some hissing of a beast sound, and then you hear blood curdling screams of more of a humanoid voice. Matter of fact, you actually hear a few words in Dwarvish. Uh, calling oh, out. Shit. Oh shit! As uh, and yeah, you're not sure you hear like sounds of beasts and then the sound of dwarves and gurgling blood and then then nothing. But you still hear the beast kind of hissing and howling in here. Um, then I'm. Um, then I'm gonna try frantically to blow on another note. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna blow on number one. One. All right. So you blow on it again. Again, you don't hear anything, but uh, you hear the noises in on the other side of the door kind of subside. Baron, was was it your Ooh. intention to kind of look through on the peepholes as you ran over there? I'm forcing my way. I'm through. forcing my way through that door. You're forcing your way through that door. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So go ahead and give me a strength check. Just an unskilled, Just an strength, unskilled check. strength check. Alright. Alright. One sec. One sec. Think. Think. Uh, uh, F Jack full trades. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to hate me, but you ran into it. You hit it hard. I mean, you hit this thing harder than, you know, a linebacker hitting a little bit kicker. But 
you hear you feel it kind of budge like maybe a half an inch or something but the the locks at the bottom and the top of this door are very very solid and you can't knock it open shit shit i'm gonna run from this side to this door and try and do the same thing there. try to bash the door put on a different yeah okay. on this one go ahead and give me a strength check Boy. Nope. <laughs> As you start running across there, you kind of lean down with your shoulder a little bit and you trip and you hit it head first with the door and you kind of, you know, stun yourself just for a second there, but the, the door has a little mark, scuff mark where your head hit it, but other than that, it, it didn't go anywhere. Right. Did someone had a crowbar, right? Yep. Let's let's use that puppy. So since, so since this didn't thing didn't budge, this little door here didn't budge with me slamming my shoulder into it. I'm gonna shove the crowbar in between it in the door jam and push with all my might. So yes, yes. I totally forgot about that. All right, give me one more strength check. Um, I just gotta check. I'm just gonna check. I'll check what uh, having a crowbar uh, does. That's what I was gonna rule anyway. Uh, uh, grants advantage to strength checks where the crowbar's leverage can be applied. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this again. So let's try this again. Use your modifiers. Modifiers. Oh shit! Look at that. Because it was tw natural twenty. Natural twenty. Five to uh, to get. That's why I was asking what your modifier was. Even see if you can get it. Alright, so, so, yeah, so, yeah I, needed to, I needed to get an 18 or up to even get through that door. Alright, so you, uh, you get your crowbar in there, just right in the corner of it, you keep digging, keep digging, and you hear a pop as, uh, as one of the locks, uh, uh, when you could gather one of the locks down here kind of busts open. However, the door is still standing there. You can kind of move it, you know, an inch back and forth, but it's not opened up enough for you to... Uh, get out of it. You basically broken a lot Shit. down here towards the uh, the bottom of the door. You this door's made, this out, door's made out of. This door has more than one lock. Okay. What's okay. The What's the door Everybody made out in of? That room, give me a wisdom check. Just, um... Just, um... <laughs> this is gonna be one of those face palm moments when you guys ever, if you guys ever figure this out. Oh, uh, tell me there's a trigger. Tell me there's a trigger. It probably is. It probably is. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Not too bad that room didn't get an advantage. But, no, actually, you know what? All your dwarves, you're going to get an advantage. That room would definitely would get an advantage since he's been in this room before. So there you go with the room. Even though you rolled a four, you figured, yeah. you figured it out. <laughs> you uh, look back in this room again, all these chains hanging from the uh, the wall and up into the ceiling. You have to pull on the chain. You have to pull on the, the chain, didn't we? What? What the heck are these chains for? What? One of those have anything to do with the doors? Who would design, Who would design such a mechanism? Some dwarf? Of course, dwarfs. Of course, dwarfs. Oh man. Oh man. And I'll go ahead and, and, go ahead and pull on one, I guess. Which? Okay, which one? There's uh, what I say, seven. There's one of the. There's one. There's eight one of in them. Corner, and then there's. Seven, uh, along this wall over here. The one that doesn't. The one that doesn't kill the party. One through seven, or the one in this corner. That's what I'm asking. Uh, I'm assuming, I'm just gonna go for the one in the corner. This one, this corner by itself. Yes. Okay. You uh pull on that chain and then feel like it's some kind of a lever or mechanism or something up in the ceiling. As you pull it down and trick V, you automatically hear a. A uh, clinking, clunking sound coming out of uh, this door right here, as uh, this door starts to open up. All right. All right. I, I say to the I, guys, I say to the something guys happening. something's happening. Well, technically, no. Technically, it won't open up. It's just a lock coming up. So, but you'll hear some kind of rumbling inside this door right here. Wow. Wow. I still say something's, something's happening. I can hear it. <laughs> but I give it. But a, I give it a. I give it a bit of a push now to see if it will give and open up a little. Tharum, as you pull this, you can feel there's some weight on it, so you know that if you let go, the chain's going to go back up into the ceiling. Okay. Okay. Is there, 
Endon. Endon, go hold that for him. <laughs> Endon's going to help him pull it with, with your one, one arm. hand. You may go hold hold a chain while you guys are about to go into the unknown. Yeah, it's yeah. not like you're yeah, going to be able to fight. That sounds safe. And uh, that's fine. That's fine. Give me a, a quick whiz. Just be stealthy. Just about be about that. stealthy about that. Room, you don't even need to give me a give me a check for this. You're going to see that each one of these chains already had a little hook on the wall to kind of help latch it in place once you get it to where you want it to go. Oh. 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 Hook it to the wall. All right. It's all right. It's all right. Man, it's, we're it's man, we're intelligent. Have you seen our wisdom, Have you seen our wisdom throws recently? <laughs> I did, I did say fine. that when you guys went to the room, right? All these chains were hanging by these little hooks on the walls. I said that, right? Oh, he's like, ah. Oh, he's like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing, it's fine. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought it was like a torture, kind of like, you know, like, hanging people. No, that, that's, that's, that's totally fine. I get it, because I, I built this room, so I know what it is. So I apologize. I just didn't explain it good enough. All right, so I'm assuming Trigby would have shared with you guys. He heard some kind of clanking noise um, behind this, uh, this door on his uh, left. Yes. Yes. And I was gonna try. And I was gonna try and push it to gently, gently push it to see if it has some give now and will actually open after hearing that. Uh, as you start to push it, uh, you definitely notice. I mean, how far are you pushing it? Just if it'll move, or you open it. Up. Uh, What's your intention? Well, I would. Well, I would. Like I'd push it like a quarter open. Open. I guess, like maybe, I guess, like maybe a foot, so I can sort of. Peek into the room and see, see what's there. See but what's there, like, but definitely not like full open, like that, like Rambo. Roll initiative. <laughs> initiative. Roll initiative. Oh shit! Son of a bitch. Sorry, I should have. Sorry, I should have rolled, rolled my initiative button. My initiative button. Do, do, do. Do, you Do you want me to re-roll my initiative button, or are you gonna put oh, me in? Sure. Oh damn! Oh damn! Oh, Look at that! Look at that! Check some of you guys, cause yeah. me and Kalar are not first. Yeah, right. we're ready to do this. We're ready to rock and roll. Right, Richard, so what'd you get? Uh, I got, uh, I got a ten. Unless it's at disadvantage. No, I don't have disadvantage. Okay, got a roll for Endon, even though he's sitting back. Do do do. Come on, Endon. What are you gonna get? Not so good. Gotta get rid of this one. Oh, come on. Alright, everybody in there? Uh, the room, that 13. Would you get 13 or 2? Got you in here twice. I got a 2. Okay. And Corn, 25, right? Yep, crit roll. Yep, crit roll. Okay. So for this one, I'm gonna roll to see if you get Warak or Usul. You guys get Warak. So I'm gonna add him into the fray here, just for combat. He'll be up here next to Corn. And this shit for him. Oh, I got a good initiative, oh, I got a good initiative roll too. Alright, so everybody's in. Let me sort this. Okay. So before that happens, so Trigby, as soon as you open up the uh, the door just you know six inches to a foot. You see something at the last second lash out and kind of smack you, or try to smack you right in the face, and it gets us with advantage. It's four. Good thing it had that advantage. Had that advantage. For, uh, Twelve points of uh, six bludgeoning, and something big and bulbous kind of smacks you upside the head, and then you instantly feel a bunch of piercing kind of into your head as well. Okay. And out. So the door's not, so the door's not e quite open yet yeah, either. Trigby said you opened up about a foot, and that's when this uh, thing flew out and basically smacked him in the head. And sitting there waiting for him. And you guys will hear the hissing and growling of uh, something behind behind the door. This Trigby kind of right, well, trying to back right, this thing well, up. I guess face. I'll try and. I'll try and push the door open. Which door? The door in front of Trigby or the, the door? Because there's two doors. One on, the, on your left and one to one your on right. The one on the left. The one that Trigby opened up, partially. Right? 
yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm, I'm talking about what you're facing. If you're on this on the screen, as we look at it on the left side, that's a different story. That one is still locked. Yeah, I'm still. I'm yeah, I'm still. I'm pushing on the door that he's okay. opened. So that'd be that'd be the door on our right, to Trigby's left as he's looking at it. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. All right. So yeah, you can easily you can easily open okay. it up, and then you too see a second one, reach out and try to smack you. That 17 hit. Uh, uh, no. Okay. So another thing kind of flies out at you, and you kind of look at the last second as the thing slams up against the wall next to your head there. And you open up the rest of the way, and you'll see these two large beasts uh, standing in front of you, almost cat-like, uh, just like uh, or Tharum or whoever explained it to you, these, like, tentacle-looking things uh, whipping up around on top of them. So now you can do your action. All right. Was uh was it a free action to open the door, or was that no, my no, action? No, it's a free action. That's fine. It's open and unlocked at this point. Okay. So I'll run in. So I'll run in there. I actually can't move myself in. Oh, you can't. Um, okay, I'll move you in. That's right. I think I put a small little window there. All right. So I'll get right next to this guy here. And I'll try to do a stunning strike on this one. Oh, I'm just reading what it, what it can do. Yeah, that is... Uh... Alright, so your attacks are at disadvantage. You start to reach out for this thing. You see it's almost like it's, it's blinking in and out. Almost like it's not really in one place all at the same time. So even with your attack at disadvantage, though, you hit the son of a bitch because you're freaking Neo. <laughs> you slam into it. Good to be the Neo. Good to be the Neo. Uh, as you hit it, yeah, you notice that it's Neo. blinking self as far as where it's you're not really sure exactly where it is. It kind of stops. And you can see it uh, as, as a whole, as one thing sitting still there, so to speak. Okay, well, I need to do a con save, otherwise it's stunned. For the strike, it's not just right away. Wow. Not with a natural one. Not with a natural one, it isn't. <laughs> Yay, DM rat rolls good. Sweet, <laughs> sweet for us. That's great for us. That's great for us. Okay. What else would you like to do? Now that you stun the, the freaking thing. Um, I would like to pummel it. <laughs> I can imagine. So these are all at advantage, correct? Oh, that's what yeah, you as a, I'm assuming it's uh, it's no longer like, it's no longer like shifting around no, either, gaining disadvantage. No, no disadvantage. So you have advantage. So you have advantage. Yeah. Right. Strike because something strike is great. Three of those hit. 10, 29 points of damage. All right, it's sitting there stunned. You can see kind of it, it was hissing at you for a second, then it just kind of stopped. And you see its head kind of lolling a little bit, and you get the opportunity to kind of kick and pop knee the bitch, and a couple teeth go flying, and you're the crunching of the little part, bits and pieces of its skull. But the, it is still standing there. All right. Well, that's all I can do. Just touch to know I spent a key for my final attack there. Okay. Alright, Baron. Hey. Okay. So I can't see through this door, like me as a person, but my character can. So can he see that creature? Okay. Okay. So let me move you back, or are you gonna move into that spot right there? Well, I was gonna. Well, I was gonna throw my spear first. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll rule you got enough room uh, between Trigby and the wall to uh, strike this one. Uh, but you can't okay. get. But you can't get okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Because again, imagine if you will, guys, this door right here. That one is still shut. It's this door yeah. on this side yeah. that's actually open. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So I'll. Okay. So I'll throw my spear to begin with. Okay. See what happens. See what happens. Yes. Pick it on yes. The kitty cats. Look at that roll of freaking twenty-five. And that uh, is that minus one in there. Or I gotta take that off. Yes. It's, yes. Uh, it's three, uh, three plus five minus one. Yep. <laughs> 
freaking piece of crap spear does seven points of damage. Well, I'm a really strong, well, I'm a really strong guy, so... And I'll run in after throwing that spear. I can't go through the thing, though, so... Put you right inside the door, and then however much movement you got left, go ahead and... Move yourself. Well, I'll just, I'll just, well, I'll, just I'll, I'll just hang out on this stunned uh, one with uh with uh Quarren uh, and I'll axe. hit it with my axe. So I have two attacks. So, I have two attacks, so why not? Uh, uh we'll battle axe it. We'll battle axe it. <laughs> oh, you guys pick on this poor little kitty cat. I can't believe you guys, man. Such a cute and little cat. I'll and I'll action surge and hit it two more times. <laughs> oh god. I wouldn't be picking on it if it didn't swat at me for no reason. <laughs> He just protecting his. You don't know. He may have little kittens in here. You know. You guys are killing two mama cats over here. I don't see no, I don't see no kittens. Minus fourteen. All right. So you hack on this thing twice. While there, it was a, such an easy target. And uh, so I'm gonna I'm rule. You even took one of his tentacles off. It's it's uh, there. Part of his intestines are hanging out, but it is still standing there, stunned. Wait. Wait. Um, um, uh, uh, this is my bam. Action, action, and my surge action surge go on, my second action. Still probably have a little, have a little tiny bit of movement. Yeah, uh, no, I'll stay there. Uh, and for my bonus action, action, I will try and knock, actually, actually I'll move over to the other one and try and knock it prone. My bonus action. With my bonus action. Is that one of your maneuvers? See if I can put it, on the, can put it on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, it's a uh, the my shield master thing. I can do a use a bonus action, to, a bonus knock action to knock him prone, push him away or from push him away from me. Either one. I have it on that, my sheet. I have it on my that, sheet. Uh, it's so that's, uh. Is that an attack roll first, or how that work? Um, it's it's um just like a, um, just like a uh, opposed uh, athletics roll, I think. Okay. Go ahead, Ned. Yes. Yes. Go ahead and roll your strength. Yes. Or... yes. Well, it's only a 13, well, it's only a 13 so, so unless it's... Yeah, no. Yeah, no. It kind of holds out one of its tentacles <laughs> on your head. It's like one of those little kids, you're swinging, but you can't quite reach it. Yeah. It's like <laughs> that bay with one of the tentacles on your forehead. Yelling <laughs> 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 at you. Uh, um, yep, that's my turn. That's all, turn. That's all I can do. Uh, Fuha, what do you want him to do? Um, Fuha um, will, will, will all running this way. I think he can only we'll get, get to there. there. I guess. I guess. Go in. Go in. Fuha? He's way back at the back. Not, am I not seeing him? You got him way back here. Are you moving him or am I just not seeing it or what's going on? Or for me. Or for me. I don't know what's going on. Oh, you moved him? Okay, now I see him move. Alright. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see he's right. Start moving, Start moving through. Has he got enough movement to make it through the door? So you still see him up so here? So you still see him up here? Yeah, I see him here. I'm just asking, can you... Can, okay. Do you want him to okay. the door, or is he right there and that's so, it? Okay. So the door, Cause he's the door, because he's into dashing into the room. All right, there you go. Comes crashing through the the door opening there and sees the. Uh, and he'll and he'll run yeah, I here, I guess, because he had thirty five, so that'll be 45. yeah forty five movement there. So he'll be there. <coughs> there. So, he's up so he's clearing up room for the people to move through the door. His action. Uh, Warak. Standing back here, at the back of the door. I don't want to steal anybody's thunder. So he'll try to... Let me get check the measurement here. Let me get in there. He's going to be all ballsy, because he has all his hit points back. He's going to run through here, and he's going to stand right between them. And what the hell, he'll go and attack the one that's not stunned. Because he's ballsy like that. Where is he at? <laughs> oh, damn. Now, oh, damn. It's, a, it's a crit, so it's 15 points of damage on this. No, it's not a crit, because uh, he has yeah, it's the disadvantage. Yeah, it's the 26. So he gets 7 points of damage. And he 
he actually has two attacks. So let's see it again. All right. It should be. It should be. Uh, it should be the seven plus whatever his strength modifier it is, because it only rolled a two d six, and there's no strength modifier added to it. I wonder how long he's had it like that. Cause I didn't modify it. Okay. Well, his second one. Huh. I'll go ahead and add three more just for now. Then I'll go ahead and look at his sheet while someone else is attacking. So he whacks it twice with his uh, great sword. Does a little bit of damage on that. Shit, Endon. You know what? Endon's going to stay back here. He's got one freaking hand. All he's got is a sword. And he's saying, uh-uh. I'm not going in there. Shit, I still have time to work on work. He don't like the kitty cat. He don't like the kitty cat. All right, so this guy is stunned until the end of his turn or the end of your turn. How does that work, Quarren? It's the end of... It's the end of Quarren's uh, next turn. Yeah. Alright, so this guy's got... Something strikes pretty, Something strikes pretty great. All around him. Can you mean, who hit him? Uh, Baron tried to hit him, but he just kind of held him back. Yeah. So, so it was just... Yeah. Hard, so get hit, or try to get hit. And the second one hits. Seven points of damage on Morak. Tentacle lashes out. Kind of smashes him upside the neck. See a little bit of blood go splattering around, and he's going to retreat just a little bit. So all three of you will get opportunity attacks at disadvantage, because he's still kind of uh, blinking uh, around. Warwick did hit him. Oh shit, then never mind, he's not going to step back. <laughs> He'll stay right there, thank you. Thank you for bringing okay. that to my attention. Okay. Um, um... I don't think I got. I don't think I got into the turn order. You're up next, Trigby, right? Okay, no, he didn't. Oh. Okay, no, he didn't. Oh. Well, I'm not on it. Well, I'm not on it there, but. I'm sorry. You don't see yourself in the turn order? No. No. I don't see him either. I don't see him either. I rolled the. Six. Hmm. I rolled the six. I it's just I didn't hit the uh, actual well, initiative yeah. button. I accidentally rolled it into okay, chat. I'm gonna, do. I'm, I'm gonna delete yeah. it out of here. You go ahead and uh, do it again, and then I'll override it to say six. Okay. So roll okay. the ship now and see if it shows up in there for you. <laughs> uh, you don't get the 23, obviously. You'll still get a 6. No, of course. No, of course. Yeah. Which puts me at last. No, second last. No, second last. I still don't see any. Did you click on your, your token before you did that? Oh, you click on the Oh, you click on the token. Yeah, That's great. Click on the token. Yeah. On turn on. <laughs> or if you click on your token, you should see on the upper left hand of the corner is a button that says initiative. That's a shortcut. You can do it that way instead of going through your sheet. But either way, you're finally in there. I'm going to move you up here to the position of six and change your number to six. You see it now, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, so bad guys are done. Okay, Trigby. Let me move you in through the door so you can see what the heck's going on there. Yeah. See what the heck's going yep. on there. Oh. How did okay. you, how did okay. you two? Doesn't he have like decks out the ass? Never mind. We'll, we'll figure out when we come to the room. <laughs> All right, Trigby. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so the one. On um, the right so the one on the right is stunned, correct? Uh, you come in and give me a perception. See if you can determine that or not. Because this is middle of combat here. It's a relatively low DC. I make it a ten, but only a perception. See if you can tell that. Yeah. You can tell he's stunned. Got to stand with a little okay. bit of drool coming out of his okay. mouth. Then, uh, I'm going to uh, do dissonant whispers, dissonant whispers on the, uh, on the uh, other one. Okay. Oops, I should roll. Oops, I should roll for that. No, it's not a roll. He has to make a wisdom save. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Uh, was it DC? What's your DC, though? I need to know that. Uh, 15. Uh, 15. So this guy needs to make a wisdom save. These smart cuties here. What did you say DC was? 15. Okay. 15. Now you can roll the damage if you want. Was it 3D6? Is that right? 3D6. 3D6. Roll yeah. that damage if you want. So that's thirteen. So that's thirteen points of damage. And he has to. Run and he has to run away if he can. Okay, 
so you, you, you see it, like it hurt its feelings a little bit, but it doesn't seem to retreat into a shell like you normally do when the, when you know this, this spell takes effect. I mean, you hurt him, but it didn't seem to be doing the same amount of damage as you were expecting. And you say, what, he has to run because he's feared, or what? It says, uh... It says, uh... If available, if available to move as... It must use its reaction, it use its reaction if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. The creature doesn't move into dangerous ground. Okay. Alright, so these guys' movement... Well, alrighty then. You hurt his feelings. Not quite as bad as you thought. But, okay, opportunity attacks for everybody. So I'll stay right there until everyone does it. Okay. Okay. Attack. Opportunity attack. Trigby, I'm on a rule for you to hit him. You would have had to have gotten over here. Is that okay? Okay. 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 Yeah. There's a, yeah. a 14 hit. Yes. Ooh, you, yeah, he got hit, so he doesn't have that thing going on. Oh, but it was his turn. Let me read that again, how it works. It's disrupted. I think it's each round. I think it's each it's round. Until the end of its turn. So it just finished its turn. And... Well even, with disadvantage. well, even with disadvantage, it's still the 14. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 14 still hits it. Damn, 12 points of damage. Okay. Uh, Warak gets one. Jigvi and Fuha. Yeah, he hits Damn, it too. Damn, Warak's a boss. Well, somebody's got to, since Indon can't shoot anything anymore. Uh, is that Fuha's attack you just did there? No, oh, it's Jigvi's. Yep, that one needs two. I'm about to do through house. I'm about to do through house. Uh, just gets one warhammer war attack. God dang, guys. It's beating the shit out of this poor little kitty cat. <laughs> kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Right. They're, They're making up for the last one. done hitting. They're trained to kill. You can hear it kind of growling and hissing and everything else. Okay, 40 feet. Let me do the measurement tool out here. It was there. See it retreat back into this little corner cell over here. Oh, and before I forget, um, the other three guys are in their cells. You're going to hear this commotion out there. So if there's anything you guys want to do as a, a free action or whatever, now's your time. I'm going to let you guys do that uh, after uh, Tharum goes, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tharum, you know the commotion going on inside that room? You want to get in there too? Or are you going to stand there and hold the chain? Yeah, can I get a... I'll put the, yeah, Matt. I'll put I'll put the chain okay. on the hook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me. And uh. And, uh I don't know. Just keep going. Just keep going. All right, there we go. Oh wow. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. There we go. There we go. Uh. uh so I see corn and and work on that one. Uh. I'm gonna move this way. Yep. And I'm gonna. And I'm gonna can I get a shot off at that? The one at the bottom here. Uh, first, you have to give me a perception check to see if you even notice it in there, because you're running through a lot of people and. and oh, it's inside. Okay. Give me All a right. perception check. See if you can notice him in there. Is that gonna be the? Is that gonna be the? The thing, natural explorer thing, or just a straight? No, just straight perception. <laughs> yeah, like that made a difference. Yeah, you see the, you see something else back in this corner over here. I didn't think about that. You guys all have uh, dark vision, but Warak does not. All right, you got a free nope. attack. You got a free nope. attack from Warak there. Next time he's going to be swinging, then who knows what he'll hit. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right, so yeah, you see him back down here at the room, back down that room. Uh, I'll get uh, in position and take a shot. Okay. You have to move shots, more of a straight line somewhere like right in here if you want to take a shot at him. You can't quite. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. nice to move him up. Is that clear? Yeah, it's good. Is that clear? Yeah. Actually, you know what? The cage is in the way. So, yes, you can see him, but he's going to get a plus two to his. Uh, AC, because you gotta kind of try to shoot through the uh, the cage. You know what? Plus three. That's that's pretty difficult to shoot through a cage. 
Can I come down this way? Can I come down this way? Uh, in order to get a straight shot, you like almost have to get like right here. Because again, he was trying to get as far. He's like basically hugged up against this wall right at this corner up here. Because this thing made him go up to his maximum distance to get away. So he's huddled in the corner. Okay. Can I, okay. Can I hold my, my attacks until he come, if he comes yeah, out? Yeah, you can do that. You can ready an attack action. Just know that if you ready attack, you only get one attack, not two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. They said he was a bad. They said he was a bad kitty. That's why I ran away. <laughs> All right. So that's your move, your action, everything, the room. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So now I'll give uh, uh, Hendel, Sylvia, and Abeforth. If you guys want to do anything else here, again, you'll hear some kind of commotion uh, from beyond the door. Sylvia and Abeforth won't be able to see anything, but Hendel, if you choose to step on your dead dwarf's friend there. And, and uh, look through one of the peepholes, you might be able to see something. Yeah, he, 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 yeah, he, he, he'll start looking out, try, try to, what, what's going on. Perception check. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, you can get up to the upper uh, opening now. You can just stand on your dead friend there. <laughs> yeah, he probably does. Hey, he probably does. <laughs> so, uh, I was going to make it a 10. Um, you can see that, uh, I think you. Saw, I think we talked before, you looked out the, the window... And did you see this one dwarf sitting here or not? Refresh my memory. Yeah, he saw him earlier. Yeah, he saw him earlier. Now you see a, a dead body slumped in the bottom of that cage. And you can just barely make out another dwarf right here standing next to the cage. And you can also see some other dwarf uh, farther along on the other side of the, the holding cell. Standing here with his bow drawn. I'm assuming you had your bow drawn, right, Therum? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes I do. Watch out for he yells, watch out for the beasties. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, we know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone can probably, well, over the den of the, the battle. Um, okay, we'll figure that when someone else comes up to it. Besides, they already know they're in, in the battle with beasties. <laughs> yeah, I figured that. Yeah, well, I figured that. He's, that's all you can do. No, that's all you can do. Anything so. Abe Forth or Sylvia you guys want to do? Well, this, you hear this commotion, but you just can't see uh, anything. Uh, 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 I'm making some noise. Making some noise. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, saying I'm... help. Anyone there? Okay. Uh, I want to uh, tell you what. Everyone else, give me a perception at disadvantage that's in the party to see if uh, you hear that. It's going to be relatively high DC because they are like two rooms deep. That's all four of you, right? Oh, that's me too. Okay. Now, all you guys hear is the sound of battle, and you actually hear all kinds of dwarves, uh, or some voices, yelling out from these little uh, doors, every little spot in here. You can't really make out anything when anybody's saying, but you hear a lot of screaming and yelling as all kinds of commotion coming from outside those doors. <laughs> okay, uh, we're back to Corin. All right, well, I want to finish, right, well, I want to finish this cat off. Ah, oh, shit. Sorry, Tegan, I forgot what I was going to do earlier. Should have reminded me. Oh, well. Oh, well. All right, uh, yeah. I that forgot is. to. I forgot to, to be honest. All right, Tegan, or Corn, as usual. You kill everything in sight. So you care to describe how you just uh, destroyed this uh, this poor little kitty here? Um, um, I, I'll just kick it in his face. <laughs> ah, whatever. This is no big deal. I'll just kick him in his face, yeah. <laughs> Bad kitty. Bad kitty. <laughs> All right, so he's dead. Drops to the floor. Pile of broken bones and lacerated uh, tentacles. What else you want to do here, Corn? Um, I'll start looking around the room for, I mean, I heard the voices, I mean, I heard the voices coming from this direction, so I guess I'm opening this door up. Uh, you, as you approach, you got enough movement to get there? Yeah, you're a monk, of course you do. As you get up to that door, you'll see that it's, it's shaped the same way as these other doors were, that uh, you saw in the guard room, and it's got a ring on the outside of it, you give it a little tug, and it, it's obviously locked. But you can hear the dwarves, and if you look through one of the little holes in there, you definitely see some of the some other dwarves in there yelling and screaming for you to help them, let them out. 
I'll see if I'll see if the ring I took from the mind flare fits. You'll see if the ring from the mind flare does what? Oh, I thought you said there's a hole, like a no, ring hole. No, it's a peephole, like a 2 by 6 the same thing that you guys were looking through in this guard room over there. Oh, okay. These doors oh, are okay. exactly the same. as a, There's a small little 2 by 6 opening up high, and a small one down low. And as you look through that, you can gotcha. see some of the dwarves gotcha. in there, kind of yelling for you to help them get them out. I'll just see how we see you. Find a way to get this door open. And, uh, that's all I can do. I, I mean, I guess I can go a little bit further down here, but that's pretty much it. Okay. Alright, Baron. Right. Uh, right. I, um... Uh, jogging, this uh, jogging this direction. And I wanna... And I wanna that's there. 25 there. Uh, 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 I can reach him. I'll throw, one of my axes I'll throw one of my axes at him. One of my hand axes. It's like fish in a barrel at this point. Go ahead, let's see it. <laughs> Shit. And I, get a and I get a crit on the next one, too. Shit. I got six and a six. Sixteen. And that was both your hand axes, right? You don't have any more, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. So both of them. Well, I had, three. I had three, but now I'm holding, I only have one on me right now. He got hit as he was uh, walking away, so he's still not displaced. Alright, both axes find their mark. I mean, one right in its side, and one almost right into its, its shoulder, and we almost yeah. like his front uh, his front leg there. Which, by the way, you see now he's, he's had six of them, not just four. Uh, but he is still standing there, bleeding badly, and just kind of hissing and shaking. 27 damage. 27 damage, that's not too bad for just throwing some stuff. <laughs> Is that it for you, Baron? Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep, that that's me. That I'm all done. Actually, uh, nah, no, I won't waste it. I only have one charge left, one charge left so I won't use it. What's Fuha gonna do? Um, um did, Fuha did, did got little, to do really, very little, so really, so I guess he'll just keep chasing. He'll keep chasing? Is that what you said? Yes. He's yes, chasing he's chasing it. Dashing again he's dashing get, again to get yeah. up to here. He's holding it in that room. He's holding in that room. <laughs> Alright, so he gets that <laughs> close. <sighs> no, it wasn't there. Yet, so, never mind. Okay. And that's his... That's and him that's, his, that's him done. Yep. Alright, Warrock sees you guys all crowd around that, that opening over there. He'll kind of stand over in this beast over and do a Captain Morgan. Put one foot up on, his, on the, uh, the dead thing and take his great sword and kind of just plunge it into its dead body. Looking kind of victorious. Cause that was easy. Endon. Oh, that's me. Endon's not doing shit. He's just looking through the door. Kind of giving uh, Warak a thumbs up. Just say, doing a good job, man. Okay, this guy. Well, it's fight or flight. He's got nothing left except for this fat little dwarf sitting in front of him. He hits. He hits. So that's eight, and the second one doesn't hit. So eight points of no. combined no. damage. They just kind of, you see it kind of shudder even further back into the corner, trying to get as far away as it can. It knows its uh, days are numbered. Yep. Yep. Trick me. Give me a wisdom check. Oh boy. Oh boy. This has worked out so, this has worked out so good for me. <laughs> All right. So nothing bad. It dawns on you as you guys are basically tearing these freaking beasts up to tiny pieces that, oh yeah, you got that little flute. I wonder if that uh, did anything in here. That's fine. That's fine. Dare I blow the, <laughs> I blow the third note? You gonna blow the third note? <laughs> third, note. <laughs> third note. Let's see, the third note. Let's see. All right, so you won't see this, but... Uh, Let's see. Oh, definitely. Quarren and Baron, give me a perception check. Probably not. Probably not. This thing gonna die. This thing gonna die. <laughs> okay. Uh, Baron, you just see some kind of movie. You can't quite see it, but Quarren, but you look inside as this thing that was like, trembling and shaking and hissing and just lashed out at, at Fuha. 
you see uh, its ears kind of perk up a little bit. It's still shaking. It's still trembling. But you see it kind of sit down in almost like a, like a sitting position and just kind of sit there kind of docile like it's not doing anything. Kill it. All right, Kill it. Dude, you blew it. You didn't hear anything. You don't see anything unless someone's doing a free action to say something to you. Go ahead and do what else you want to do. Uh, well, I'm gonna say, uh, well, I'm gonna say what did that do? What did that do? <laughs> and this. And this. And then I'm gonna move up. And then I'm gonna move Aaron, up a it's bit. it's up to you whether Fuha says anything or not. Nope. It just hit nope. him. He's gonna it just him. hit him. He's gonna kill that fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright, Trigby. So, you move up there. Um, it's gonna be a difficult shop you're gonna to try to hit something since Fuha's standing right there in the doorway but uh, what's your intention from there um um i mean, I mean hang on let me just check this. hang on let me just check this uh i'll use uh, just, I'll vicious, use mockery just vicious mockery at him <laughs> if he dies from this <laughs> right, that's a whiz save right uh, uh, yeah. uh yeah i believe so just let me yeah, it's a wisdom save. Yeah, it's a wisdom save. Yeah. If they they succeed, they don't take any damage. Fifteen. Fifteen. Ah. So you see, you start throwing insults at it. And it's just sitting there, you know, perched on its uh, little, nice little calm sitting position. And kind of cocks its head a little bit, you know, like dogs do when they're looking at you. And just sits there. Ah. Ah. I guess he didn't hear me. Call I guess him. he didn't hear me call him a bad kitty. <laughs> Or that, or you didn't understand it. Maybe you said it in the wrong language. Anything else, Trigby? Uh, no. Uh, no, that is all. All right, Tharoom. You haven't even taken a shot. You're ready in action to shoot anything that came out of there, but all you see is a, another dwarf sitting in your place. What would you like to do here? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell uh, Yell to Indon to start pulling down the other chains in the guard room. Okay, I'll give you that as a free action. And he'll do that on his next turn. And then I'll just move to... And I'll just move to... Uh, here. And then I'll just be... And then I'll just be... I'm going to look out for any other... Uh, attack, attack, attackers or anything like that. Any, any other enemies. Uh, I'm not going to make your roll perception check. You'll see there's uh, each corner of the room has a, a similar size or style of room to where you saw that thing retreat into but from that vantage point where you are right now mm -hmm. you don't see anything else in those uh, those two rooms okay okay uh i'll dash, uh, I'll dash to yeah. actually i could dash right yeah i'll dash down to is there is there a, is there a door here i'm sorry where i didn't see you click on this side yeah. sorry there's no door here right? there's no now door there's here door right, right here there's a door right here. Sorry, right there. Then you obviously see the, the the two on the left side of the screen, right? And there's one right here. And this door, yeah. there's there's no door left. It's just like where it's kind of caved in. Okay. I'll just dash to this one here. You like? Okay. Be my dash. So that's all your turn. Mm -hmm. All right, Corin. Oh, sorry. Go back to the other three. Uh, Hendel, Abe Forth, Sylvia. And you still hear all the commotion out there a little bit. You heard uh, one of the hissing and growling kind of die down a little bit. A few shouts and screams. Well, actually, a lot of shouts and screams from all over the place. In both rooms next to you and also out into the uh, general area. Hey, we're, we're, we're making noise. Okay, just make sure there's no action there. Right? Just just keep continue to yell, right? Uh... uh... <laughs> Uh, Hindle's yeah. looking to his Hindle's looking to his people and cheering people on. <laughs> yeah, so you would have seen pretty much all this action going on over here, of how uh, you would have saw the one retreating in there. Uh, as you get closer, eh, you might see something over here, but not real clear. But you got a good view of everything out here in front of you. Gear it, though. Yeah. Gear it though. All right, Corin. I'll get all kinds of shouting coming from all the doors. What do you like to do here? Well, well, I'm figuring 
I mean, I'm figuring all these doors are locked, but I'm still gonna try them just in case. I'll try this one. So I'll try this one first. Try to see if it's unlocked. Try to see if you can break it open. What do you mean by try it? Try to see if it's locked. Try to see if it's locked. Yeah, you walk up to it and pull on the ring, and it, it doesn't budge. It's it's locked, similarly to like the the garden room doors when you guys first came through. All right, well, I'll try this door down here. Same thing. You can see the dwarves on the other side through the people just screaming at you. Let me out! Let me out! We're trying. We're trying. Um. Um. I guess I'll, I guess I'll go back up here. And, uh, I'll actually dash, I'll actually dash to where Endon is. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm Start not gonna really gonna dash and, and check all the doors. Okay, that's fair. Okay, that's fair. Well, I'll just head up, uh, well, I'll just head up, uh... Do you have enough movement to get back out the door? To here, then. It's like, uh... It's like, uh, five feet out the no, door. No, do you have enough movement to get out the door? Oh, you said you have five more feet of movement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you and Indon kind of stand there next to each other. I'll move him up a little bit. Okay. Anything else, Corn? No, that's it. No, that's it. Hi, right, Baron. No one seems to want to put this cat out of its misery. Is it you? Um. Um. Can I even make well, can I even make to it? So that's like if it's difficult terrain going, going through there. So that takes me to twenty, and then that's twenty-five there. So you see the cat just sitting. Let's lay out some damage on this poor kitty. Looking at you, almost like purring, but you don't care. Alrighty then. You guys are mean. You killed him on his first shot. The guy's yep. just sitting there, you know, minding his own business, purring at you. And you just cut him down. Just open his just throat. Open his throat. <laughs> With the axe. With the axe. Alright, so we're out of initiative. Out of combat initiative, I should say. So now it's just it's just popcorn. Whatever you guys want to start doing here at this point. Um, I am going to rule that... End down wouldn't come up for a while, but... then for anybody else. End down what I've heard, uh... I think it's that room. Or somebody yell about... Uh, oh, pull some other chains. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. So he come in there with his, with his yes. one hand, and kind of slowly, but he kind of grabs the chain, pulls it down, puts it on the hook. Grabs the chain, pulls it down, puts it back on the hook. Grabs the chain, does this for a while, and slowly, you guys will see. Let's see which chain's gonna grab? Be that one. You hear clanking sounds over in uh, this area, but. Nothing happening. There's no door over here. As Endon starts pulling on that chain. All right. Well, I'm like. All right. Well, I'm like wrong, wrong chain, and I grab another one. You just grab the one next to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing it. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing it at random. Okay. So. I'm just gonna kind of blow through all this stuff. So as you guys pull each one of these chains that are along the the wall over here, uh, each one in sequence. It starts opening up every one of these doors, kind of the same sequence as how the chains are lined up. Uh, there's no door here. It's broken, but you eventually open up this door first, to which you'll see one, two, three doors emerge from there. And same thing all along. Each one of these these doors will open up. We'll move you back to that room as these other guys come out. And as each door opens up, you see bunch of dwarves coming out, a lot of them looking very malnourished, thin, uh, just not doing very well. And this door, I'm assuming you guys will come out this door first, right? Sylvia? Uh, yes. I'm just gonna uh, yes. Guys all out here. Uh, yeah. You guys will eventually come on out. And just so you see a fourth, you went to this room, then you went out that room. Now you can see the carnage out here. Alright, so you guys can start Talking, doing whatever you want while I'm pulling the rest of these dwarves out. I've started passing out, I've started the, passing out some food rations. The one dwarf, the one dwarf has, a has a skillet in his hand. Walks and he walks over to the 
dead displacer beast. Dead displacer beast and just start smashing the hell out of it with the skillet. Blood's kind of splattering all over the place. Some of the dwarves um, are just kind of shaking their head um, a little bit. Okay, I think that's all of them. Well, like a family oh, actually, like a actually, family actually, reunion actually, in here. I screwed up. These guys. Endon does not open up their cell or theirs. I spoke too fast. Um, everybody in that center cell got out. But none of the guys. Oops. Right here. And they'll start screaming more frantically as they see their other friends getting out. Says, why don't you let us out? Let us out too. Um, maybe it's the other room that we didn't get into. Like, maybe we need to. Like, uh -oh. <laughs> and Don will pop his head out here. Did that work? He looks around the room. Have you got all the chains? Have, have you got all the chains on? I pulled all of them. Took me a while. As you can probably tell, he holds up his one hand. Hmm. <laughs> uh, this is one. Uh, this is one of those, right? Um, because it let out. This is one of the ones with an opening in it, but it leads into another of these rooms. It's, yeah, it's right, that's probably has the same little peepholes, the two by six, two inch by six inch, on top and bottom. Right. Um, right. Um, well. Well. The other one was a pain in the ass to get into. <laughs> yes, it was. Fuck it. I'm getting... Fuck it. I'm getting... Can I go back through this door and try and break this other room open, you know, where I failed to pick the lock? So, you're going to... Okay, you went through that door, yeah. You can get through the, yeah. the door on the right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just checking yeah. the correct sheet to see if he's more of a strength guy than you guys are. Than me? Than me? No one's stronger, no, than, no me. One's stronger than me. <laughs> No, he has a strength of 18. So are you going to do the crowbar thing again? Yeah, I'm going to crowbar Yeah, I'm going to crowbar it. <laughs> Let's see it. Oh, that was it right With there. With advantage. With advantage. Yeah, and the 25 to get out of there. All right, so you've been able to crack that one open. And you walk in, you see the exact same thing. You see a series of chains. So it's a whole bunch, so of, chains it's a whole bunch of chains. Over on this cor okay. corner over here. Okay. A shelf with another flute on it. And there's another chain right here as well. Okay, I pull. All okay, the I chains. pull all of the chains okay, down. Exact same thing as before. But then, you know, this door right here opens up. I'll move you back into the room. I'm assuming you're gonna go back in there after that, right? Yeah. After yeah. I after I pull down all the chains, yeah, I will. The doors are open, and the rest of the doors are free as well. And I also and I also the dragged the body of this displacer beast out here. Oh, we're all right. Let's put on my dwarves. Okay. I'll move over a little bit. They'll stay a little bit close and. A few of them kind of walk out and kind of kick the thing in the head as they're they're making their way out, kind of following suit with uh, what Hindle's doing over there with his his uh, his pan, bashing his this poor little kitty's head into a pancake. Oh, but now he stopped. Oh, but now he stopped. Has his... anybody seen my jug? <laughs> jug? 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 My yes, my jug. Is that like code for something? Endon says. No, uh, my no, uh, jug. my jug. I don't know where your jug is, and Don kind of shrugs a little bit. Have you seen a Have jug? you seen a jug? Trigby says we, Trigby saw, a says, we saw a bunch of old jugs and broken and bottles in infirmary the infirmary we came from. I have no way to tell. I have no way to tell if it was your jug or a jug. Were they all broken? Were they all broken? <laughs> I was busy adventuring. I was busy adventuring. I didn't have time to check them all. You're not much of an adventurer if you don't check. Ooh. Ooh. Brutal. Got some more dwarves. This room is getting quite crowded. Holy moly! Holy moly! There are a lot of dwarves. I see several of them kind of. Got our own mini army. They're probably all hungry too. Sam, you see a few of them kind of huddled around some of the cages stuff and and crying a little bit as they. They obviously know what, what happened here. Uh, the two on the outside are completely, you know, you can't even recognize them. This one in here just kind of has his throat slashed out. Uh, part of his arm is missing, but he's still intact. You can see his face. Eyes still open. Mouth open. 
Hindle starts, looking at, Hindle starts looking at the displacer beast with a different kind of look, like he's sizing it up for food. I'm not sure how healthy that would thinking. be. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> Yeah, like how much? Yeah, like how much meat is on these things? You said they were like panthers. Uh, they're like skinny panthers. They're almost uh, like like uh, skin bones, so to speak. But there is a little bit of meat on them. Their bellies are full. Yeah, we probably don't. Yeah, want to we probably don't want to eat that. <laughs> Can we skin Can them? them? There's not enough meat. There's not enough meat on that thing to cook. Need to find my jug. Need to find my jug. That'll help. Uh, uh, Sylvia, I I, 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 ask, I try and ask does people, anybody does anybody know how to get shackles these off shackles or off, or do they have a dispel or, or a knock or something along those lines? Anyone? I told you I could break them. Not your kind of knocking. I mean, I could try and break them if you'd like. like just grab them and snap them. I'd prefer not. I'd prefer not. Why not? Why not? I I would probably kill us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Long story. Long story more or less, but more or less, shackles. with these shackles, no magic. Well, sure. well, sure. we're not. We're not magical incredibly either. magical either. That all we got that is Usul. Yeah, Usul will come walking in. I Sorry, stare at him. I'm just stare at Osul like got anything? Got anything? Osul will come walking in like yeah, look at me, I'm I'm a badass. You guys killed them all, but here I am. <laughs> I didn't like him anyway. That's his, his model, right? And he walk up over here closer yeah. to Sylvia and take a look yeah. at the uh, at your manacles over there. He says, I've never quite, you know, seen something quite like this before. I mean I have some spells, but I really have no idea if they might work, they might not, I don't know. Tell me a little bit more about these. I just, well, in a, I kind of whispered to Sylvia to tell them that, uh, that there's it, a dispel magic or a knock spell would work for these. But if any, anything else could potentially cause quite a bit of harm. And Usu kind of uh, looks somewhat distraught as he kind of turns back to you again and says, Says knock spells. I'm 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 not aware of. Says all I've got is uh, spell magic. He says, will, will that work? That'll that'll do. That'll that'll do. Says unfortunately, I those are very taxing for me to do, and I the most I've ever done in a day is is, is three of those. So, if you, I, if you go ahead, if you're able to use two, we. She and I are both spellcasters, so we can cover that if we get our things. So you're you're, you're asking me to just free one of you? Both. Both. both, preferably. Okay. You say, well, I can. I'll do my best. Who who would like to go first? Rock. Uh, rock. Was... Rock paper scissors. Rock paper scissors. Pull the parchment. Pull the parchment. Cheers. Right, let's let's roll, right, let's, let's roll a d6, and you call even or odds before yeah, so I roll. I just want to share this out of out of character okay. with the, all the other group because these these three that were in this room knew about this. But these uh, manacles they have on them are magical in nature, and if if they try to cast magic or uh, anything drawn within them that, that kind of wields magic, it blasts them with a massive amount of necrotic damage, which I can't Ooh. remember. Did I, did I share with you guys if you actually tried that once before? If you got hit with the magic, or you did, that was a previous magic user told you about it? Uh, we we found out. Uh, we we right. found out about you it. You guys haven't actually experienced it yet, correct? Uh, okay. No, right. but, I no. but I guess I'm going first. <laughs> All right. All right. You're going first, Sylvia. This spell me. Let me read my my notes here. How correct. This works. Uh oh. Uh oh. The instruction manual. The instruction manual is a little damp from being in a dungeon. <laughs> okay, there is just, a there is a DC just, for this, for him to. Yeah, uh, if it's not. If it's yeah, if it's not, if it's not a uh, third level or lower spell, then yeah, he has to meet the DC to dispel okay, it. This is Usul. He's a druid. He's just he's kind of explaining this to you, not in like technical terms like I am, but just so you're aware of the ramifications if he fails. 
that it's not a uh, it's not a given that it will work. And one second, so we can get a little more information. Okay, it's it's an intelligent save. Again, he's doing this in more layman's terms, I guess, so to speak, than technical. And he'll tell you that that's not one of his strong suits. He's more of a wisdom it's kind just, of guy. It's just it's just it's just, a, it's, just a, it's just an ability check using your spell casting ability. And it's DC of the spell is ten plus the spell's level. You're assuming that I'm going strictly out of the book, Baron. This is this is something uh, uh, the mind player right. up with. So he tells you guys it's not a given. He said my intelligence is not the best skill, so there is a chance this 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 may fail. But I will try if you want me to. I mean, what are the, I mean, what are the alternatives? We're going to be manacled either, either way. True, true. That is correct. So you want me to go through with it again? As Abe Forth is answering for Sylvia. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll step up if Sylvia doesn't want no, to go. I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. I, I lost, I lost the, the toss or the, the rock, paper, scissors or whatever. So I hold my shackles out. I hold my shackles out and I sort of look away like with my eyes closed, like get it over with. So here, let me, let me try to be a good GM here. Our, the wizards are intelligence based, right? Yes. So if yes. you go first, I'll let you make the save. How about that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You okay with that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean if, if Sylvia's okay with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, so let me, I'll just do the spell so you can read it, and I want you to make the save. Do, 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 do. DC 14. Okay. All right, here it goes. Oh, nice. All right, so he casts a spell. You look down at your, your, your two wrists, and you hear a click, and a little bit of, like, you can feel the faint magic within the, the collar on your neck subside. But uh, the two on your wrists are still there, still humming. The ones on my wrists aren't? The ones on my wrists The ones on your wrists are still humming. The neck no longer is humming. You can you know, okay. feel there's a difference in, in oh, the, shit, so the magic. Like two, two to get all of it. I'm sorry. Say again. Okay. Okay. So you have to do it. Okay. So you have to do it. Another intelligence save. If you want Usul to cast it again, yeah, he's got to do it like for one for the neck, and then one for the wrist, and one for the other wrist. He's got to do it three times. So three total. Holy shit. <laughs> there's, there's no. There's, there's no. There's no keys for this, right? Are you there? don't know that. Well, one of well, one of my my check, my, my check for our kind of said that I thought they might be able to be picked. Uh, uh, no, I don't think. No, I don't think. Uh, I think you said the lock picking wouldn't work either. You know that the dwarves tried to do it before. I think that was on the other magic user, right? That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's no. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's what I recall. That they tried that on the other magic user. Yeah, they weren't able to unlock it. Um, I can't remember if I shared with you guys if he got racked with pain or if they shared that with you or not. But uh, long story short, both those dwarves were, were executed by the mind flare for trying to break them free. Well, well here's here's to nothing then. You gonna do it again? Look at you! <laughs> All right, same thing. Click, click. All three of them. The magic is gone on now. They're still on you, but you can tell that the magic is has uh, subsided. And just so I'm clear on this, I don't know if I explain, you have a a collar, steel collar, and there is a chain running from the collar to each hand. You still have free movement. You can move all around. It's basically like uh, you got jewelry with chain connected from your your wrist to your neck. If that makes sense. I see. No, yeah, I got it. Um, can break that for you. Can break that for you. Yeah. Yeah, would you please? I'll try and break it. I'll try and How break it. Are you going about breaking? You're gonna like break the chain? You're trying to I'm, break it apart off the wrist? I'm, the I'm just grabbing the chain with my hands and pulling the it so the links break. Okay. Do it with your strength check, huh? Yep. Yep. Okay, your strength check. Uh, uh, pull you, you almost feel like something maybe bending a little bit, but 
chain's still there. Do you know, do you know, do you know that one's that one's a bit that, that one's a bit tough. I'll try the other one. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking at um, Ben and be like, might I suggest something else? Nope. And nope. I, like. <laughs> You pull even harder the second time. You're just pissed off because you can't break these chains. But again, well, you just can't. Well, break shit. Them. Someone else do it then. Someone else do it then. I'll, I'll put my um, like lay my spread my hands out as far as they can go from each other and put my hands on the floor so that the chain is lying on the floor. And I say, someone, would you please mind if you hit it with a hammer or perhaps have an axe? Have an axe. No. Well, just don't hit me. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. As far away from my head, like I'm trying to make this as safe as possible. Oh. Oh. Take some stretches. Okay, Take my axe with both hands. While, while you guys are saying this, Hindle comes around, and just smacks it with his skillet. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, damn. That is. Good job. That is Good awesome. job. Oh. Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, he comes down. Actually, has a has a damaging threshold of ten. And and you hit it, so yeah, he's able to smash the chain, one of the chains apart. Again, there's a chain running from your neck to your right hand. There's a chain running from your neck to your left hand. So you smashed one of the chains. Your choice, whether it's a right or left. Oh, okay. Left. Yeah, you still have you still have smash the cuffs. The right one. Smash the right one. Yeah, please. Don't roll a one. <laughs> Look at you, Mitch. Twelve damage, and you smash that one as well. So now you're sitting there with a uh, collar, has bits of, you know, about two or three feet of chain hanging from it. And you have two uh, steel bracelets with about two or three feet of chain hanging on them. Yeah, how can we find my stuff? Yeah, how can we find my stuff so I can feed these people? And I'll, I'll walk over to Sylvia and I'll try and help with her if she wants to do the, the spell magic. Oh shit, he did three times. Hey, yeah, Sylvia's going to look at it. So I, I, was that, so that was very taxing. I got to wait at least another day before I try that again. Time. Counting towards the dis dispel magic or no? I'm sorry, say again. Pardon? I, Pardon? Didn't, I didn't hear you, uh, eight fourth. You guys hear me? Yeah. 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 yeah I didn't hear what he said either. Yeah. No. Couldn't... Yeah. No. Couldn't hear. Eight fourth. Did we lose you? I'm not sure if he's still there. You're cutting out on my side. What I was that? asking what you said. I couldn't hear you. Oh, were those, oh, were those three intelligence saving throws uh, for the dispel Correct. magic? Yeah, so Usul is basically tapped so out now of his... Uh, his dispel magic uses. Now, out of character, if we had gone the magic pool way, he probably would have had more. <laughs> But that's fine. That's for next turn. <laughs> well, I mean, he could cast them as, at a, using a high level spell slot, couldn't he? Oh, I didn't think about that, but no, I think that was... Let me look with this sheet. That's a very good point. Let me double check that. If he has higher... He only has two more... No, he does he have three. Have, um... He should have... He um... Two at fourth level and one at... So is he a ninth level? Yeah, he does have three left. He's got two slots at fourth he has and one slot at fifth. So he could if, he's a ninth level. if he's a ninth level druid, he has three fourth level spell slots and one fifth. He's only got two marked here for some reason. Oh, probably because he was eighth level. Spells in there. He's got three slots. You're right. So yeah, he can cast it yeah. four more times. Yeah. Lucky you. You want him to do it again? Ooh. Uh, I. I. Sure. Okay, you want him to use his intelligence or yours? I'll let you make that call. Well, well mine. Well, mine Intelligence isn't great but, I'm sure it's great, but I'm sure it's better than his. Yeah. Better than his. So, uh, so, uh, oh, so, so is mine. Oh my god, that's mine. Um, actually, um, actually well, that's bad. Well, that's bad. While, that's bad. Happening, while that's happening, Trigby is going to play his bagpipes to try and entertain people. <laughs> and <laughs> as a result, <laughs> part of it is you get advantage on, on your saving throw. Oh, if you're part you of the party, what? you're welcome, Abe Forth. I'm not going to go back on it, but you guys are all level suffering from exhaustion, so all three of those intelligence saves should have been at disadvantage. It's just, it's just checks, not saves. 
Yeah, it's just checks. Cause yeah, it's just saves checks because like saves is like three. exhaustion level three. Attack is it attack rolls and saving throws? You have disadvantage. Oh, you're right. I, I stand corrected. Number two, number two, is, number two is your speed is halved or reduced by ten yeah, feet or something like that. I had to learn them very well at one point because we were being chased across an entire country. And we did not sleep for days. All right, so never mind then. Go back to the before. So, again, your your call, Sylvia. Do you want to roll the intelligence check, or do you want me to? Assuming you still want to do this. Jeez, I will. Jeez, I will. I will, I will uh, still roll the intelligence check. Okay, do them one at a time. Oof. I got to pull this up to remind myself how much damage this works if it doesn't work. Hurdy hurdy. Hurdy hurdy. So you get an added advantage because Trigby's playing his bagpipes. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. There's one success. So click. The color kind of subsides. You can feel the magic humming of it kind of dying down to nothing. Try it again. Ooh. Okay, I gotta Ouch. roll this. Ouch. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> How many hit points do you have? 52. 52. 52. Okay. You should be good on after this one. As he, he calls he, he calls forth the magic. You feel yourself concentrating on one wrist, and then all of a sudden it just racks you with so much pain. You, your wrist turns black, and it kind of crawls up into your arm, and your fingers turn black, and your fingernails kind of fall off. And you take 24 points of uh, necrotic damage along that one arm. And Usul kind of looks disheveled at you a little bit. says, I can only cast this one more time. Whoa. 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 I'll... You you broke up there. I didn't hear you. And um, is it just my end? Are you guys here? Are you able to cast spells now? No, I. Am I, I no, I. I heard him. Okay, just my end's kind of crap out on me. My kids must be on the Xbox over here. All right, so say again what you're doing. Uh, eight fourth. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, are we, um, are we, am I able to cast a spell You're now? You're a wizard, right? Yes. You need a spell casting yes. focus, or components, and a spell book. Oh, yes. We need to find our gear. We need to find our gear. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, well, you do. I just need to find my jug. So does that mean you guys are holding off on uh, Usul casting his last spell slot for this? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. I'll say, well, if he only has one left, I'm still going to have one on my arm. So. Yeah, even if so he succeeds, say, right. So I would say. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's go try and find our stuff. Oh, did, uh, I guess I'll. Suppose I'll wait until next time. So, shall we? All right, so you guys are all in agreement. You're going to try to figure out where your stuff is? Is that right? Yeah. Hinda wants yes. his jug. Hinda wants yeah. his jug. <laughs> yeah, Hinda's right there. Yes, we know you want your jug. Jeez. Okay, well, we'll look for a jug. Any jug? Is it, do you care what a jug is? Or? No, my jug. My no, jug. my jug. Okay, well, we'll see if we can find your jug. Does it have your name on it? No, but I'll know it when I see it. No, but I'll know it when I see it. Alrighty then. It'll slosh when you pick it It'll up. It'll slosh when you pick it up. Oh. Oh. All right, so. <laughs> you have one of those. I didn't know how many of you guys gave up some of your rations to all these hungry dwarves here. I heard Corrin say it at one point. Yeah, I gave up. Two. Yeah, I gave up two rations or two days worth. Two days sure, worth? I'll give up. Sure, I'll give up. I'll give up five days worth. Okay, because if, if you have enough 
to give a day's ration to each one of these guys, and you're all good. Otherwise, whoever gave out food is going to get mobbed by all these guys trying to get more food out of you or from you. They're begging you, won't leave you alone. They're basically crowding you, and, and you can't hardly move at this point. They're begging you for more food. At this point, I start begging for the hand for it steps forward and says, Look, help me find my stuff, and I will cook us dinner. Yeah, I swap people away if they're like climbing on me. Uh, Handle, give me a persuasion at disadvantage because you're suffering from exhaustion. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, look at you! You <laughs> suck. Yeah, I cannot. Double leave natural twenties. Oh shit! All right, so <laughs> that was not a very convincing way you just said it, but evidently it worked. These guys are just dumbfounded and starving. Okay, okay, Handle, just let let's be quick about it. They're all kind well, of, I'm sure that the guys well, I'm sure that the guys in my cell are kind of like, well, he's not a bad cook. <laughs> well, you know, we were eating like, who knows what we were eating. We could have been eating our friend's toes for all we know. Well, it was at least edible. Well, it was at least edible. <laughs> all right, guys. So we've reached, mm, we've reached the, uh, mm, the four hours. I want to call this kind of a stopping point. But I do want to kind of uh, recap with the whole group about some of the happenings that have been going on in here. Uh, I'm assuming that Abeforth and Sylvia, Hindle, and the rest of the dwarves have been sharing what these guys have been enduring in regards to uh, uh, some of these dwarves. and matter of fact, some of you guys would have even noticed it. Uh, some of these dwarves have strange-looking uh, hands. Uh, those that aren't wearing shoes, which is most of them, see several of them have strange-looking feet, almost like they don't have digits or bones in them. They're more like flowing pieces of flesh and skin. Um, they will share the stories with you about how some of them were basically being used by the Mind Flayer to feed some of the minions. So, uh, those that were either too weak or that, that acted up or whatever were taken back into the room and they'll point up here towards the north of where the holding cell is. And they would basically like chop off their hands or their feet. And then that Mind Flayer would use some kind of magic something that would adhere itself to their missing appendages. And they would grow back in this grotesque looking, uh, it's like a flesh colored root. If you can imagine what that kind of looks like. See, little, you're not yeah. sure, you're not sure if yeah. it's hair or if it's other tiny little roots kind of growing off of it, but that's what some of their appendages look like. And so they were using that to feed some of the, the goblins and, and the trolls and stuff like that when they were running short on food. And several of them would have also shared that even though their hands were replaced by this grotesque looking thing, there were times where they even cut that off and then it would regrow uh, another grotesque looking hand right in its place. Okay, we'll, just have to we'll just have to take off them. Right. Did I miss anything else, guys? As far as what I shared with you three, then not with the rest of them? I can cover it. I think it okay. covered it. Yeah, we have to All right, so we're going to call it there and then uh, when we come back in hopefully two weeks, We'll pick up where we left off, unless there's something else you guys want to quickly kind of either go over or ask or, or do in this scenario. Uh, uh, I, was, I guess I can ask if anyone found... Uh, actually, I wouldn't even know that killed the Mind Flayer, so... You wouldn't even know what? I'm sorry? If they killed the Mind Flayer, if they killed the mind flayer yet or not. I, no, you guys tell me, would you guys have shared that information? I'm sure the dwarves would be asking about that how... The that the Mind yeah, Flayer is dead? Yeah, sure. Most sure. of the dwarves would be asking about how you guys managed sure, uh, to get through yeah. here and everything. So, I imagine they shared that story with you as 8th 4th. Alright, in that case, uh, I'll ask if anyone had seen, had found a ring that the Mind Flayer took from me. Uh, I found it here. I was afraid to put it on and I was afraid to put it on because I thought it might be cursed, but here you go. Here's, here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll take a look at it. Make sure it's still kosher. What do you mean by look at it? If it was still kosher. What do you mean by that? Uh, if it's still the way. Uh, if it's still the way it was. If it was when I uh, when it was taken from me. Uh, other than maybe seeing a little bit of dried blood on it, it, it looks the same. Okay, and the, and the since I know what it is, like the magical properties of it, 
Do, do they still I think the same? you still have to reattune to it since you've been away from it for about three weeks. But yeah, you know what it is. You recognize yeah, it okay. as being your ring. Yeah. Oh. So I'll just take time and attune to it. See, and you guys are all paranoid about putting on a ring. I don't understand why. <laughs> All right, well, now they're 50-50 instead of just 100% cursed. <laughs> <Right. laughs> All right, anything else, guys? Um, yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm good. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's right, guys, it. Uh, good session. It took a bit longer to get here than I, I thought, but uh, we'll pick up again here in two weeks, and uh, we'll see if you can find Hindle's jug. <laughs> yes, we must find Hindle's jug. Yes, we must find Hindle's oh, jug. You guys leaving the one dead dwarf uh, from the cell in there? Are you going to bring him out? Definitely not. Definitely not. We'll okay. get him out. Well, you're not going to let him out. I have to drag him out, but okay. All right, guys. Hindle's not concerned about him. Not concerned about him. All right, guys. Good session. Uh, I'll go ahead and call at that point, and uh, I'll send out another reminder probably next Friday for our next session in two weeks. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you, Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you again. All right. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good night, guys.